Hello, it's nice to meet you. I'm Emma, James's new secretary. Nice to meet you. James always speaks highly of you. I'm sorry to contact you out of the blue, but I really wanted to say hello in person. So I asked James for your contact information. Oh, thank you for taking the time to reach out to me. James has mentioned you to me before. He's very impressed with your skills and is looking forward to see you grow even further. It makes me feel relieved. <laughs> That's good to hear. I'll be counting on you to take care of James from now on. It's comforting to have someone like you by his side. Oh, not at all. By the way, miss, I heard that your name is Jessica. It's a vintage name, isn't it? How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Huh? Is it? I'm 38 years old. What? 38 years old? Is... is it a name that was popular at the time? It feels kind of old-fashioned, doesn't it? Huh? What do you mean by old-fashioned? Uh, uh, never mind. Um, so... James is 10 years younger than you, isn't he? Yes, that's right. So what? Oh, uh, it's nothing. I'm sorry. It's just that I don't know any couples with such an age gap around me, so it's kind of unusual. Is it really that surprising? There are a lot of couples with an age gap these days. Oh, I see. Uh, but being ten years apart and getting married is kind of amazing in a way, isn't it? I'm not sure what you're trying to say, but... Well, never mind. Emma, I'm counting on your support for James. Yes, uh, sure thing. I know being a secretary can be tough, but hang in there. I think we'll have plenty of opportunities to meet from now on. If you have any problems, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. Likewise, it's great working with you. Anyways, I'll get back to work now. Excuse me. Hello, a long time no see. Oh, hi Emma. Yesterday a friend gave me a rare souvenir, and I thought you would like to try it, so I'll give it to James to pass it on to you. Oh, how exciting. But, um, she actually got it from a newly opened store that's very popular among young people and is hard to get. They say you have to wait for an hour to get it. Really? Where is it? It's probably not a place you know because it's geared towards young people. It became popular after an influencer who is popular among young people introduced it on social media. Wow, it's such a famous store. I'm looking forward to trying it. Since only young people are lining up, it's hard for you to get close to it, so I thought I'll give you a piece of it as a gift. Huh? Oh, but you don't check social media, do you? I do check social media, you know. Oh, really? I thought you might be too old for that kind of thing. Age doesn't matter, you know. My friends check it too. Oh, I see. That snack looks trendy and is definitely geared towards young people. I'm worried if it will suit someone like Jessica. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Age doesn't matter when it comes to good food, right? Uh, yeah, you're right. I'm looking forward to trying it. Thank you for your kindness. Hello, it was nice to meet you today. Likewise, it was nice to meet you too. Yes, uh, after that I went on a lunch date with my husband. Have you returned home already? I got back home a little while ago. Is everything okay? Did you have something to discuss with James? No, it has nothing to do with James. I was waiting for a chance to talk to you alone. Me? Did something happen? James not being there is better, you say. Is there anything you're worried about? I just wanted to ask you something that's been on my mind. Can I ask you about it? What is it that's been bothering you? What is it? Well, I'm curious how someone like you with such a significant age difference met James. It's not easy to meet a man 10 years younger than you. What? What's wrong? Why are you asking such a sudden question? You just met Jessica for the first time today, right? Yes, that's right. I was really surprised when I saw you, though. Surprised? Was there something about me that surprised you? Well, you see... 
you're an older woman and looks pretty average, while James is a super handsome guy with high specs. I can understand if his partner was someone really beautiful, but you... I just can't wrap my head around it. So I wanted to ask how you met and managed to get him. Emma, what's gotten into you? I don't understand why you're saying these things. No, I, I mean... Don't keep repeating it like that. I just want to know how an ordinary middle-aged woman like you was able to marry James. Emma, do you realize how rude you're being? Am I being rude? I'm just saying what I honestly think, right? Well, I think everyone at the company probably thinks the same way. Did you hear someone else say that? Mm. I didn't hear it from anyone in particular, but come on, let's be real. You're just an ordinary looking woman who's 10 years older than James. It just doesn't make sense, you know? Excuse me? I'm your boss's wife, you know. Stop being disrespectful. I'm not disrespecting you or anything. I'm just stating my opinion. You are so rude. I thought you were a more respectable person since you're a secretary. It's good to be honest, isn't it? Oh, I see now. Your family was rich, right? Your parents must have invested a lot of money into him. How do you know about my family? And my parents never invested anything into him. Are you kidding me? If it wasn't for that, he wouldn't marry an old lady like you. I don't know where you heard about my family, but you're wrong. Maybe you don't know because you just joined the company, but James built the current company from scratch on his own. His success is due to his own hard work and effort. That's why our parents didn't provide any assistance. Are you saying it's not for money? That's ridiculous! Your parents probably supported James behind the scenes. You just don't know it. I'm telling you, they didn't do that. You just refuse to believe it. Then how did you get James? He could have married someone like me, who is younger and more beautiful. What? Hey, Emma. Could it be that... Could it be that you like James? I thought older women were clueless about this kind of thing, but of course you would have figured it out eventually, right? That's right. Huh? Emma, are you serious? Of course I am. Serious about what? What are you thinking? James is married to me, you know. That's messed up my plans. I chose this company because I thought I could snag a young, handsome CEO. I never thought he would be married. What's gotten into you? There are things you can joke about and things you can't. I wouldn't joke about something like this. I love James. At first, I thought I would give up when I found out he was married. But after meeting you, I changed my mind. There's no need to give up, right? Why would you say that? It's one thing not to know, but most people would give up once they find out, right? Well, that may be true for most people. But I noticed it. <laughs> it turns out that I'm better looking and younger than you. What? Are you stupid? I'm serious. Unfortunately, you don't stand a chance with him. There's no man who doesn't fall for me. James won't be fooled by you. Who knows? Actually, all the men I've dated so far have been married. But in the end, they all chose me over their wives. <laughs> men are so easy. What? You've only dated married men? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Their wives never found out, though. <laughs> no, that's unacceptable as a human being. We were just having fun, so it doesn't matter. But this time, I'm serious. So I told you to have a fair and square competition. That's why. Competition? What kind of person are you? What a despicable woman you are. You can say whatever you want, but it doesn't matter now. It's in the past. It is not a problem since it didn't come to light. It's not a problem if it didn't come to light. But you know, they just come to me on their own, even if I don't invite them. It seems like everyone is crazy about me. I'm not the bad one since I didn't invite them, am I? Ah, <sighs> I see. But now you understand, right? What, that you're a despicable woman? No, it's not about that. James will fall for me too, you'll see. Jessica. So we'll have to ask you to give him up. I see. You have great confidence. 
I really can't even muster the energy to be angry at someone as ridiculous as you. I have no intention of competing with you. Enjoy feeling confident while you can. It's a shame, though. I was told the new secretary was competent, so I was reassured. I never expected her to be such a scheming woman. I'm a genius. Not only can I deceive men, but I can also deceive you. Is that so? I was completely fooled. By the way, does James know about this? Of course not! James trusts me from the bottom of his heart. I always act as the best secretary in front of him. So I have one request. Promise? Please, don't tell James about what we talked today. If you do, I'll mess up the company. What? What are you even talking about at this point? It's really ridiculous! Anyway, if you want to protect his company, then stay quiet. Emma, where are you right now? You've really done it now. Oh, Jessica. Hello. I'm in the president's office at the company right now. It's not hello. What the hell is going on? Well, what's wrong? Why are you so angry? It's not what's wrong. James said he forgot his tie, so I came to deliver it to the company, but I was stopped by the security guard and couldn't get in. Is that so? Mm, that's unfortunate. I'm his wife. It's ridiculous that I was stopped. You're the one who pulled the strings behind the scenes, aren't you? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, but the tie. Though, if that's what you're talking about, then it's no longer necessary. What do you mean it's not necessary? James asked me to bring it. Well, if he asked you because it's necessary, then it's obvious, isn't it? <sighs> you just don't understand things after one time, do you? I already prepared it, so it's not necessary anymore. The ones I chose and bought are better than the ones you choose. I always thought the ties he wears are so tacky. <laughs> Jessica, you really have no sense, do you? Well, I guess it can't be helped since you're an older woman. What? Ugh, you're such a rude person. Is that so? I want him to be perfect, so from now on, I'll choose and buy the things he wears. What are you talking about? You said that James' support? <laughs> Please. I'll take good care of James, so you don't have to worry anymore. Stop fooling around already. This tie is the most important thing to James. He always wears it as a lucky charm for important business negotiations. He was planning to wear it for today's negotiation, but he forgot it at home and asked me to bring it. Oh, I see. But it's too bad. From today on, this important tie will change. I chose the one for James. I'm sure he'll like the one I chose for him more than the one you picked. That's enough. I can't talk to you anymore. I'll contact James directly and give it to him. Oh, that's impossible. James is in a meeting right now. But he carries a smartphone with him, so he should be reachable. Oh, that's also impossible. He left his phone in the president's office, so I don't think you can contact each other now. Oh, really? That's a problem. Yeah, it's too bad. But let's give up. I'll explain everything to James myself, so don't worry. Okay, I understand. Then can you give the tie to him for me? But I already told you that the tie is prepared. Anyway, come and get it now. Oh, by the way, you haven't told James about me yet. You kept your promise, haven't you? You haven't mentioned me to James yet. Well done. Yes, I haven't told him yet. After that, I thought about it and realized that maybe you're just thinking about him on your own. As a secretary, he trusts and expects a lot of you. And I trust James. So for now, I've decided not to say anything. Uh, being young is definitely a good thing, isn't it? He always wants to have young people around him because he's stuck at home with an old lady. James is also a man, so he prefers a younger woman. It's only a matter of time before he chooses me over Jessica, who is old. You always say such funny things. James would never choose someone like you. I just don't want to bother him with such trivial matters. Trivial matters? <laughs> That's because you can afford to be carefree now. <laughs> is that so? Anyways, can you just accept this tie quickly? Did you not hear what I said earlier? 
I already said that it's not necessary anymore. Just come and get it now. You'll regret it if you don't give it to James. What do you mean? It's for your own good to take it now. Ugh, fine. I'll accept it just this once. You should have just accepted it quietly from the beginning. Anyway, thank you. Hey, Jessica. How are you? There's something I really want to ask you. What is it? Hey, how are you? You're still such a rude person. I can't believe you have the nerve to contact me like this. Oh, come on. It's no big deal. Let's be friendly with each other since we both love the same person. You're truly hopeless, you know that? I'm not even interested in listening to your nonsense. I'm not so bored that I want to listen to your nonsense. Should I just block you now? Come on, don't be so cold. Listen to me for a moment. <sighs> oh, by the way, the reason I contacted you today is because, well, I want you to break up with James right now. Huh? You always say things that make no sense. Oh, you still don't know? I started dating James. What? Why are you suddenly saying something like that? Stop saying weird things. It's true. He's head over heels for me. A young girl over an old lady like you, right? I won this competition. That's a lie. No, it's true. I understand if you don't want to believe it. I won't believe anything you say. Even if you say you don't believe me, it's the truth. James said he'll break up with you. Oh, really? I've never heard that from him. He's so kind, so he doesn't want to hurt you. If you heard that he chose someone younger than you, you might faint or something. <laughs> well, I thought that might be the case. <sighs> but you never know when he'll tell you if you wait, right? That's why I contacted you instead. You feel frustrated that he might be stolen by a younger me. But don't you want James, who you love, to be happy? <laughs> Sorry, I can't help laughing about how ridiculous this all sounds. What's so funny about it? I want to be with James right now. Oh, I see. I'm the type to act quickly once you've made a decision. <laughs> that's why I can't wait so long and want to break up soon, right? But that's just impossible. <laughs> There's no way James would betray me. <sighs> you're so full of confidence. Even though you're an old lady. <laughs> well, that's right. Do you know why James chose me? There's no reason, really. He just happened to choose you who happened to be there at the right time. He was too busy with work and didn't have any opportunities to meet anyone else. Poor James. <laughs> you say you're dating him, but you don't know anything about him, do you? Are you really dating him? What the heck? Don't keep me in suspense. Just tell me already. Hey, have you ever asked James what type of girl he likes? Of course. Men like younger and prettier women over older women, don't they? <laughs> you really don't know, do you? Maybe the men around you have been like that too. Well then, shall I tell you? Uh, just say it already! Well, you see, James has certain conditions for the person he falls in love with. What? Conditions? Yeah, there are conditions. It's like... He likes women who are 10 or 20 years older than him. What? That's impossible! It's true. He's always had a thing for older women. That's why he chose me, 10 years older, to marry. That's a lie! James is just being considerate of you! An older woman! You're just trying to convince yourself of that! It's definitely true! It's too bad. He talked about his preference for older women, and even his parents have mentioned it. Apparently, he also dated someone much older than him before me. So it's true. You're lying! Stop saying nonsense! You're trying to break up James and me! I won't be fooled! So, I'm saying that it's true. Why don't you ask him and confirm it? You're dating him, aren't you? That's right! He chose me, so it's definitely a lie that he likes old ladies! It would be shocking to find out that the person you love likes someone completely opposite from you. Well... That's why I realized that what you're saying is a lie. Shut up! You damn old hag! Your true nature as a nasty woman is finally coming out. That's why, unfortunately, just give up. You lost this battle. Uh, it's definitely a lie. Well, well, don't be so down. 
It can't be helped. I won't believe it, no matter what. There's no way an old lady like you can beat young me. I understand how you feel. You were so confident that you'd win, and it's hard to accept the truth. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be like this. I know you're feeling down right now, but there's something that's been on my mind a bit too. What is it? I heard that you're good at your job, but I can't help wondering if everything about your career and credentials is a lie. What? Why would you say that all of a sudden? It's not relevant now. It's just that I've been thinking about it for a while now. As a secretary, you don't seem to have any manners. The way you talk to the boss's wife and the way you mix work with your private life. Are you sure you have the qualifications necessary to be a secretary? What? That is, I don't need to be polite to you just because you're James's wife and I like James. That's all there is to it. Oh, really? Poor thing. You probably didn't know this, but let me tell you. What now? Is there something else? <laughs> Before I got married, I was the head of the secretariat of a top-notch company. So I can sort of tell if you have the qualifications to be a secretary or not. Uh, um... Uh... I'm the kind of person who wants to get to the bottom of things once I'm interested. So I contacted the personnel department to check your resume. And guess. What? I found out that the resume you submitted during the interview is missing. Really? That's too bad. Well, I have a pretty good idea who did it. What? Are you doubting me? I didn't say anything like that. What are you getting so worked up about? No, no, I'm not getting worked up or anything. Oh, I know. The HR department should have the resume saved as data. You should check with them. But it's really suspicious that they would dispose of the resume like that. Eh? The HR department has the data? Yes, they do. Is there something you're worried about them finding? N no, not really. It's okay even if they see it. That's true. But I, I just don't like the idea of having my privacy invaded. But you mix your work and personal life together anyways. You're just saying that because you don't want to be looked into. Even though I said it wouldn't be a problem if I were to be, it's just that I don't like the idea of being investigated. Well, you just have to make sure you're not seen, right? What are you planning to do? Oh, come on. It's obvious, isn't it? If I seduce the guy in the HR department, he'll tell me anything I want to know. And if I can get him to delete the data, problem solved. It won't affect me at all. Are you trying to manipulate another man again? Well, hiding something implies that there's something to hide, you know? What? You still won't admit it? You're really unbelievable. <laughs> I win. You may be the boss's wife, but you're an outsider to the company. So there's no way you can manipulate people inside the company. I'm not so sure about that. And besides, only management can access employees' personal information. So it's pointless to go after other male employees. Just give up and admit it already. Whether it's management or not, all men are the same, right? Like I said before, there's no man who can resist me. So you should give up already. You really don't know anything, do you? You can act tough now, but it won't last long. W what? You don't know who the head of HR is? <laughs> it's scary that you don't know. What do you mean? Spit it out! I think I'll disappoint you. But the head of HR is my brother. What? Your brother? Your brother is the head of HR? That's right. You really didn't know, did you? I heard you were a competent secretary, so I thought you knew the internal situation of the company. There's no way I could know that! So, whatever you do is useless. My brother won't be deceived by you, and I've already told him everything. So, such a thing? Well, you were so desperate to get James that you completely neglected your work, didn't you? You had no idea about the internal information, do you? What's so great about being an excellent secretary? Hey, stop it! What's the matter with you? I never trusted you from the beginning. James hasn't been told anything yet because he's still expecting something from you. But I'm sure he'll be shocked when he finds out. From the beginning? That's a lie. It must be a lie. Because you believed me and got deceived. <laughs> it seems like I was one step ahead of you. 
I had to deceive you to reveal your true nature. Your behavior and attitude towards me were unacceptable as a secretary. I'm currently investigating whether there's any misrepresentation, including your past work history. Once everything is clear, I'm going to tell James too. What? Uh, you're just saying things off the top of your head. Where's the evidence? I said we're currently investigating. So just wait nervously, okay? It's such a terrible company to investigate even employees' private matters. Unbelievable! Why are you getting so mad? Do you have something to hide? Falsifying your work history is a serious crime, you know. Which one is worse, hmm? It's written in the employment contract you sign, isn't it? That we would investigate if you took actions that caused or were likely to cause damage to the company. And you've become the subject of that investigation. Th that's... I didn't even read the contract properly! It's your own fault for not reading the contract properly. Anyway, just give up already. You're finished. Uh, Jessica, please. I apologize for everything I've done so far. I'm not even dating James. I made up all the lies. I'm really sorry. James would never fall for someone like you. I never believed anything you said from the beginning. And it's too late for apologies. Do you think I can keep a wicked woman like you, a scammer, close to James? It can't just be forgotten. I'm sorry. I understand now. I won't go near James anymore, and I'll quit the company too. Please forgive me. It's already too late. But, as for the company's disciplinary action, it's not up to me to decide. So just wait for the company's response. Look forward to it. I heard that after, Emma contacted the company regarding the unauthorized investigation of her personal information. She threatened to sue the company by hiring a lawyer. She is just an evil person, isn't she? When we looked into her private life, we found more and more misconduct, including falsifying her work history and embezzling money from her previous employer. Her parents had to shoulder the burden of the embezzled money and pay it back. I reported everything to James, who had trusted her, and he was shocked at his poor judgment. Emma was severely scolded in front of the board members, including James, and given two options. To go to the police, or to reform and work for the company. She promised to reform herself and work for the company. James asked me to be her mentor, so I trained her strictly and made her obtain all the necessary qualifications for a secretary. She's become a wonderful secretary, calling me big sister, and always following me like a puppy, showing great affection. Her character and manners have improved dramatically, and she has grown into an outstanding secretary. I guess she had the potential all along. As for me, I'm revered as the god who turned the evil woman into a saint by everyone in the company, and Emma's parents even thanked and respected me. James and I are still good friends and have a good relationship. No one can come between us. Crichton, are you working now? There's something that I really want to talk to you about. What's wrong, Thelma? Can we talk for a bit? Is it urgent? I'm working right now. Can't we talk later? I have something I want to talk about right now. I finished work and had plans, but I can come home right away. Can we talk when I get there? <sighs> I really need to talk to you now. Now? Is it that important? What's going on? Yes, I really need to talk about it now. Okay, I don't have much time right now. What's going on? Is something wrong? Actually, I want a divorce from you, Crichton, right now. What? All of a sudden? Even if you tell me something so important so suddenly. I want to get divorced from you right away. Why? What's going on? Did something happen? You're right. It's sudden for you, Crichton. I can't give you an okay right now, just because you suddenly said that, and I don't understand what it means. I still have work to do. Let's talk about it when I get home. My feelings won't change. What do you mean your feelings won't change? Anyway, I'm at work right now. Can't we both agree that we'll talk when we get home? I can't accept it if you suddenly want a divorce. 
I've been thinking about a divorce with you for three months. Three months ago? I had no idea you were thinking about that. If there was something unpleasant or bothering you, you should have told me, right? That's not it. Then why do you want a divorce? What's the reason? I don't understand. Explain it to me. I want to be with someone I really love. That's why I want a divorce from you, Crichton. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean by really love someone? I mean I want to marry someone I truly love. Didn't you marry me because you really loved me? That was true when we got married. So you're saying it's different now? Yeah, I have feelings for someone else. Huh? You have feelings for someone else? Yes. Are you saying you want to divorce me and be with a different man? That's right. What? When did this happen? We were just spending time together like always until yesterday. Yes, but my feelings for you are gone. Have you already become deeply involved with him? No. We haven't. I don't know when this happened, but do you really want to divorce me? Yes, my mind is made up. I want a divorce from you, Crichton. I see. We haven't become deeply involved, but I feel like our hearts are connected, and I really believe that he's my soulmate. Once I realized my feelings for him, I realized I don't have feelings for you anymore. I couldn't continue like this. I've been thinking about it for three months now, and I've decided to get a divorce. That's why I wanted to talk to you about it now. I see. I understand what you said, but I can't give you an answer right now. Let's talk about this carefully after I get home. It's just a pure connection between him and me, heart to heart. I want you to believe that. All right, I understand. Anyway, let's talk about it at home. Even if we talk, my feelings won't change. Anyway, let's talk more about it slowly after we get home. It's the answer I came up with after thinking about it a lot. I understand that, but I can't just say okay right after hearing it through a message. So I'll come home as soon as work is finished, so please wait for me. Let's talk thoroughly. After the end of work. Hi, Crichton. Are you finished with work? Yeah, I just finished. Are you doing okay today? There's something I want to talk to you about. Greg, I'm sorry. I promised to do something with Thelma today. Can we do it another day? Uh, I see. Sure. Is everything okay? Actually, Thelma just told me she wants a divorce. Oh, I see. So we're going to talk about it after work today. I'm sorry to hear that. It must be a difficult time. No, it's okay. Sorry for canceling our plan suddenly. When things calm down, let's talk again. Sure, sounds good. I'll contact you again. Thanks. One hour later. Thelma, where are you? I just got home, but... My feelings haven't changed. I've already left the house. What? Why? That's a bit too selfish, don't you think? I've already told you how I feel. The divorce papers are also there. Yeah, I saw them. But we agreed to talk tonight, didn't we? What's there to talk about? Can you please come back home first? There's no point in talking. Why? Because my feelings haven't changed. Even if your feelings haven't changed... Why did you start feeling like you wanted a divorce? I won't be convinced unless I hear everything. I don't need to talk to Crichton anymore, so I thought it would be better to leave the house altogether, and that's what I did. That's just too selfish. Why is it selfish? I've already told you how I feel. I understand how Thelma feels, but don't my feelings matter at all? If you don't want to talk face-to-face, -face, at least pick up the phone. 
How many times do I have to say it? I'm telling you my feelings haven't and won't change. Whether we talk face-to-face -face or over the phone, nothing will change. I see. Does our marriage end that easily for you, Thelma? Has my determination finally gotten through to you? Your feelings have been well communicated. But divorce isn't something that can be done so easily. If you still love me, then let me go. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You're being selfish. I want to see your greatness as a man one last time. What kind of statement is that? It's getting ridiculous. So our married life is just like that. Huh. Ending without even being able to talk. Have you finally decided to get a divorce? You said you want to get a divorce today. Feelings can't be resolved that easily. That's troublesome. I want to get a divorce right away. I want to have a proper discussion in the end. Even if we talk, it won't change anything. I've made up my mind to divorce. Talking is a waste of time. What's with that tone of yours? If your feelings are not going to change, it seems like divorce is the only option. That's right. I want to end this. Finally, the conversation is moving forward. However, if we divorce, there are conditions. What conditions? The first condition is that you return the joint savings passbook you took. That's impossible. Why not? I've only worked part-time since we got married. And we don't have that much savings. So what? We're divorcing because of your selfish change of heart, aren't we? So what? So the joint savings belong to me. I thought I would receive it as a parting gift for me to be happy from now on. That's too selfish, and I can't accept it. What's wrong with it being my own decision? We saved the money together, so it's not fair that you have it all, Thelma. You're the only one who wants a divorce, so it's impossible for you to take it all. It's fine for Crichton, because he has a stable income. That's a separate matter. It's impossible for me to give you everything. That's just not fair. You're the one who decided to get divorced for your own reasons. We haven't even had a proper discussion, and you're already agreeing to a divorce. Plus, I have my own life to consider, and I can't get divorced without getting that savings. I can't accept you taking it all, Crichton. If you're not satisfied with that, do you want to involve a lawyer? It will cost you time and money, but if that's what you want... I'll see it through to the end. I don't have that kind of money or time. Plus, if we involve lawyers, it will take even longer to be with your destined lover. Okay, I understand. I understand. Crichton, you can keep some of the joint savings account. But I can't agree to you taking it all. We saved it together, so can't we split it equally? Hmm... Since you're getting divorced for your own reasons, I want to say it should be all mine. Please, this is my last request. I don't have a stable income from a part-time job, and you know how much money I make, right? Please, let's split it equally. I guess there's no helping it. But you'll just end up with another man right away, won't you? Can't he take care of you? I think that might happen, but... Then what if I paid the full amount? That's irrelevant. We saved this money together. This is such a hassle. All right, I got it. It's settled that we'll split it. Is that good? Thank you. I'm not satisfied, but okay, it's settled. And what's the second condition? The second condition is that you will never rely on me for anything in the future. That's the second condition. That's the second condition? No matter what happens or how difficult it gets, don't come to me for help. Well, that's a given, isn't it? We're getting a divorce. I won't need your help anymore. Well, that's great news. Okay, then it's settled. Yeah, it's settled. Actually, it's a good condition. I was worried that if I continued to have a relationship with you, it might be misunderstood by my new boyfriend. 
It's better if we don't have any contact. I see. Then we both have good conditions. Thank you, Crichton. If you agree to these two conditions, I'll agree to the divorce. Okay, I understand. Once the money has been divided in half and transferred to our accounts, I'll go and file the divorce papers that are here. Got it. I'll let you know as soon as I transfer the money. Okay, got it. Make sure you file the divorce papers once the money has been transferred. Sure, I promise. Three months later. Good morning, Crichton. Good morning, what's up? Our divorce has finally been finalized. I transferred the money this morning. Did you confirm it? Yeah, I confirmed it about 30 minutes ago. A promise is a promise. Thank you so much. I still can't believe we're divorced. Thank you for divorcing me. I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. It may be hard to find a woman like me. Yeah. In a sense, it'll be difficult to find a woman like you. Crichton, I hope you find happiness. I, too, will be happy with my destined partner from now on. Thank you, too. Be happy with your partner. Yeah, thanks. The next day. Good morning, Crichton. Oh, Greg, good morning. Sorry for getting back to you late. I canceled on you when I promised to help you out last time. I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. Anyway, are you okay now? Today is a company holiday, so I'm available to help you with the issue you couldn't tell me about last time. If your schedule allows it, that is. I need your help. Huh? What do you mean by need your help? What's going on? Are you okay? There's a woman who seems to be stalking me in front of my house right now. A stalker? Hey, are you okay? It's been really bad lately, and it's scary. So the thing you wanted to talk to me about is the stalker? Yes, that's it. I've been struggling with this stalker issue lately. I see. I used to be followed by a stalker woman about three times a week, half of the week secretly. But these past few days, she's been following me every day. It's a scary situation, and I'm running away from her. Why don't you contact the police immediately if you're so scared? If you're having such a scary experience, why don't you call the police right now? She pushed herself into my house today, and I'm really scared. Call the police right away before talking to me. But I thought I needed to talk to you before contacting the police. I wanted to consult with you. Me? Why? Your safety is more important than anything else. Isn't it better to call the police now? I can still help you with the consultation later, right? Actually, I think the woman who's stalking me might be your wife, Crichton. What? Thelma is? Is she stalking you? Is that true? I can't believe she would do something like that. Yeah, I know. It's sudden, and I'm really sorry. No, no, it's okay. But how does Greg know about Thelma? Didn't you want to show me a picture of your wife, Crichton? I remember her face because it was memorable. Ah, that's right. That's how you remembered her face. Do you think Thelma is stalking you, Greg? I think so. That's why I wanted to talk to you before contacting the police. I see. That's what it is. You want to confirm if it's really Thelma. Actually, I met Thelma when I was taken to a bar by Peyton from the sales department due to work reasons. What? Is that so? I had no idea that Thelma goes to bars. At first, I didn't realize that Thelma was Crichton's wife. Did you drink together? Yes, we did. The impression I had of Crichton's wife from the photo he showed me was that she was simple and kind. So I never imagined that Crichton's wife would be at such a bar. Moreover, when we met at the bar, Thelma was wearing flashy makeup and clothes, so I didn't recognize her at all. Is that so? Her makeup and clothes have changed a lot recently. 
Also, she told me that she was single, so I never thought she was Crichton's wife. Did she really say that? Besides, I was quite drunk, so I didn't really understand or realize that she was Crichton's wife. I had no idea that Thelma went to that kind of bar. And she even said she was single? That's why, at that time, Thelma, who was quite drunk, actively approached me. I feel really sorry about this. But since I was drunk, I didn't pay attention to it, and then Peyton, who was sitting next to me, started making advances towards your wife. Is Peyton someone who works with you? Yes. The advances continued for a while, but your wife ended up being taken away easily. I really hate to say this. Seriously? That really happened? I had no idea. It's shocking. Unbelievable. Yeah. He seemed really busy with work, Crichton. And Thelma said she had another man before getting divorced. But she said it wasn't that deep of a relationship, so it was a lie. Is that so? I'm sorry for talking too much about it. Was this when I was on a business trip abroad? I think so. It was around that time. Looking back now, I remember when I returned home after work and noticed Thelma's clothes and makeup had become more flashy. I had been thinking lately that she had been looking flashy as well. Even though she was busy and struggling, she was working hard in an unfamiliar place for her family's sake. I'm sorry. It would have been better if you didn't know about this. And at that time, she was playing around with another man. I can't believe it. This kind of betrayal is unforgivable. That's why she mistook me for the man she approached and brought home that night. It was actually Peyton, not me. I see. Thelma still thinks that it was me she spent the night with and has been stalking me since then. My Thelma was really doing such a thing. At first, I was involved with her as a friend, but it kept escalating. I never thought Thelma would do something like that. It's going to take time to believe. Yeah, that's right. It's hard to believe such a story all of a sudden. What is Peyton doing now? He said he was getting married. Is that so? Is he still working with us? No, Peyton has already resigned. Getting married. Do you know who the partner is? Well, I don't really know. Around the time of Crichton's overseas business trip, Peyton said he was going to permanently move abroad and resigned. Is that so? Moreover, since he left without giving anyone his contact information, no one can contact him. Is that so? Peyton made a huge decision. When did you find out that Thelma was the stalker, Greg? Actually, I just found out a little while ago. A little while ago? That's right. I never thought Thelma was his wife. She always wears flashy makeup and clothing. But I saw her a little while ago, and she had natural makeup on. It was your wife in the photo you showed me, and I couldn't believe it, so I contacted you. So that's what it was. I can't believe that Thelma is really doing something like that. I'm so surprised that it doesn't seem real yet. Yeah, I thought it might be a mistake too. But since you also mentioned getting a divorce, I thought maybe it wasn't a misunderstanding and consulted with you. I'm really sorry it turned out like this. No, no, don't apologize. Actually, it's embarrassing that my ex-wife is doing something like this. I'm really sorry. Crichton, you don't have to apologize. How is Thelma doing now? Can you tell me the situation? Is she still in front of your house? Yes, she is. She's still in front of the house and keeps ringing the doorbell multiple times. And not only that, she's saying things like this. I got divorced for you. I want to nurture our love together. And we'll be together forever. And don't be shy. Open the door. She's saying those things? And she's saying them in a loud voice in front of my door. It's really annoying. I see. Got it. It's a good thing she's not at home right now, so she didn't have to be scared, but... It's really the worst because the people in the neighborhood are also watching. It's really troublesome. I'll contact Thelma right now. 
Can you wait? Will you contact her? I'm sorry, and I thank you so much. I really appreciate it. By the way, is there any evidence that you didn't take Thelma home from the bar that night? Something that can prove your innocence? If there is, can you tell me? Got it. I'll look for it. Also, just in case, make sure you report it to the police immediately if anything happens, okay? Got it. Thank you. You really saved me. Five minutes later. Hey, Thelma. What are you doing now? What am I doing now is none of your business anymore. I didn't want to contact you right after the divorce, but I need to talk to you about something. Come to the house for a moment. Right now. No way. We're already divorced. What's the point of talking now? You said we wouldn't contact each other anymore. That's true, but the situation has changed. Anyway, come to the house right now. I don't want to be misunderstood by my destined partner, so don't contact me. Anyway, I have something important to tell you. Come to the house right now. No way. Sorry, but I'm going to live with my destined partner, so I have no intention of getting back together with you. I'm sorry, but I have no intention of getting back together with you either. Then why do I have to go to your house? Don't contact me anymore, please. I told you not to contact me because I don't want him to misunderstand. I understand. If you don't want to come to my place, at least explain it properly through messages. You see, Thelma, that so-called faded partner of yours, is actually my colleague. What? What are you talking about? That's a lie, right? I can't believe it. You're just lying to get me to come to your place. What's the point of lying now? It's the truth. Greg is your fated partner, isn't he? Greg is your colleague? Yeah, that's right. My colleague Greg sent me a message asking for help because some stalker girl kept ringing his doorbell. Stalker girl? Is that me? Don't say it like that. That's terrible. He wouldn't talk about me like that. We're connected in both body and soul. You're talking nonsense. Before we got divorced, you said you weren't in that kind of a relationship with him. I'm sorry I didn't tell you the truth. I thought it would get complicated and we might not be able to get divorced. What the hell is that? You really are the worst. I'm sorry about that. But we're already divorced, so it's not your concern anymore, right? Don't just shrug it off like that. You weren't divorced yet at the time, were you? You really are so selfish. It's already in the past. Can't we just leave it at that? Anyway, Crichton, please. What is it? Please clear up the misunderstanding with Greg for me. What misunderstanding? Tell him I'm not a stalker, please. You're the one who's misunderstanding things. Huh? What do you mean? Am I misunderstanding something? The man you took home from the bar wasn't Greg. What? That's a lie. It was definitely Greg. It wasn't Greg. It was a guy named Peyton. That can't be right. It was Greg. No doubt about it. You were drunk and mistaken. It's all your misunderstanding. What do you mean it's not Greg? It was definitely Greg. Greg didn't get drunk that night. He drove on the highway at night to get home for the family's memorial service the next day. That's not true. It's absolutely not true. We spent time together. That's your misunderstanding. You were too drunk to even remember who the other person was, right? That's a lie. It's a lie. You don't believe me? But there's evidence, you know. Evidence? It's on Greg's dash cam. It proves that you weren't together with him that night. That's... that can't be true. But I was definitely with Greg that night. It also shows you eating the beef jerky that Greg got from his parents. I ate it after Greg gave it to me. I thought he was my soulmate. The beef jerky that you ate was the proof itself. It was the beef jerky that he got from his parents. That's... I feel so betrayed. And by the way, Greg has a wife. Are you kidding me? There's no wife. 
She's not even at home. You stalked him so much that you even know that? Of course not. She's not at home now. I've never seen her. What does it mean that there's a wife? Greg's wife is on maternity leave, so there's nobody at home. What? So he's not my destiny? Greg's wife and baby are planning to return home next week. No way. It's all a lie. It's not a lie. Greg is going to live happily with his wife and child. So get away from Greg's house right now. Do you understand? Come on. It's all a lie. After all, Greg is my destiny, right? Wake up, Thelma. Greg was scared because of your stalking behavior. I haven't stalked him. Greg has been scared by your behavior. I just wanted to convey my resolution. But that scared Greg. What? I just wanted to express my feelings. Anyway, get away. And if you don't leave the house right now, I'll report you to the police. Right now. So get out of that house right now. I don't want to, because I want to be happy. Be grateful that Greg is my co-worker. He consulted me because he thought you were my wife. If he wasn't my co-worker, I would have already contacted the police. It's a misunderstanding that I'm a stalker. If I give the go-ahead, the police will be contacted right away. So get out of that house quickly. I understand. I understand. I'll leave right now. If you understand, then leave right away. Some days later... Crichton, what should I do? What's up? We're divorced. Don't contact me because it's irrelevant. Besides, we agreed not to rely on each other in times of trouble. I have something important to tell you more than that. What now? What's next? You know, I found out I'm pregnant. You're pregnant? That's why we need to be together. Let's get back together for the sake of the child. Even if you tell me something important like that suddenly, it's not like I can just say, let's get back together. How far along are you now? I'm in the twelfth week of pregnancy. That's not my child, is it? Well, I am unsure. I was busy with overseas business at that time, so it's not my child, right? I don't know that. You should know better than anyone else. Don't act like you don't know. What should I do? It's not a matter of what you should do. You did this to yourself. Take responsibility for your actions. The man you had a relationship with is named Peyton. Is Peyton my destiny? I don't know about that, but Peyton is currently living overseas. Oh no! What should I do now? Don't ask me what you should do. Anyway, it seems that Peyton said he would permanently reside in his wife's country to have an international marriage. Is that so? So he's overseas now? That's right. Moreover, he went overseas without telling anyone his contact information, so nobody knows how to get in touch with him. What is this? Then what should we do with this child? Although I sympathize with Peyton a bit for his actions, he lied about being single and had a relationship with you, so he also has responsibility. I was really lonely because you were always on overseas business trips. You know that you shouldn't do something just because you're lonely, right? Besides, with Crichton around, I hardly had any time for myself, balancing work and house chores, and I wanted to spread my wings a bit. I've been working hard all this time while you were spreading your wings. It was for our future together. You're right. I'm really sorry. Even if you apologize now, it won't change anything. I was talking to Crichton just now, and he confirmed that he still thinks of me first, and he's my destiny. You're lucky to have so many destinies. It's ridiculous how easily your feelings change. Crichton, you really are my destiny after all. That's why I want to remarry you. I'm coming back right now. Cut it out with the jokes. I have no intention of remarrying you. Wait, I finally realized that you are my true destiny. What are you talking about? You're the one who betrayed me, remember? Yes, but I finally understand that you are my true destiny. 
I've already moved out. I won't tell you where I live, and I refuse to let you continue to control my life. What am I supposed to do now? That's not my concern anymore. You have to figure it out on your own. Didn't I tell you not to rely on me when we got divorced? But still, Crichton, I believe that you will help me. That was the condition when we got divorced. Don't forget it. I haven't forgotten, but... You agreed to have no further involvement with me, right? Yes. I will block your contact information and have nothing to do with you from now on. Understand? Okay. Goodbye, Crichton. Thereafter. After explaining the circumstances of the divorce to Thelma's in-laws, her father-in-law came to apologize with money. I had already decided to have nothing to do with Thelma, so I refused the money. But her father-in-law insisted that I take it as a form of closure and said that Thelma would work hard to pay it back, so I accepted it. I didn't know what to do with the money, so I decided to give Greg's family a vacation as a way of making up for the trouble we caused them. Greg was very happy with the gift, and he even told me not to worry about Thelma's situation, which was a big relief. As for Thelma, her father-in-law found out about the divorce and the reasons behind it, and she had to go back to her parents' home. My father-in-law was pretty angry. It's natural, I guess. After all, his daughter had an affair. Thelma didn't want to anger her father-in-law, so she lived in a hotel for a while. However, she couldn't continue that way of life forever, and it seems she had to return to her parents' home. Thelma seems to have given birth safely, but she has started working under her parents' watchful eye. I can't help but think that if she had continued to stay married to me, this wouldn't have happened. But I guess when it comes to one's destiny, it can change at any moment. I heard about Peyton's recent situation from Greg. It seems that Peyton went abroad to get married, but was tricked into a marriage scam and lost all his money. So it seems that Peyton doesn't have the money to return home, and he's been asking his colleagues to lend him some money. He also contacted Greg, but of course, he refused to help. This incident made me realize that bad things always come with consequences. I've decided to live honestly and earnestly from now on. Also, I want to build a lovely family like Greg's and finally find happiness. Jenna, isn't your honeymoon trip coming up soon? Please take me with you on your honeymoon trip, big sister. Please? Yeah, we were planning to go on our honeymoon trip soon, but what happened? Well, actually, our honeymoon trip got canceled. Huh? Are you kidding? I'm sorry, didn't I tell you? What? The honeymoon trip got canceled? I didn't hear about it. I thought I had already told you. I'm sorry. But why was it canceled in the first place? It was supposed to be in just a few more days until departure, right? That's true, but actually, right after the wedding, my husband's grandfather passed away. And then? We talked about it and decided to cancel the honeymoon trip. Are you serious about that? What do you mean? Well, the only time we can go on a honeymoon is now, right? That's not true. I think we can go another time. Is it necessary to cancel it? It's unthinkable to cancel our long-awaited honeymoon just because one elderly person passed away. Just one elderly person? That's a very disrespectful way to say that. Really? You're getting married soon too, aren't you? As an adult, you should be more careful with your choice of words. Well, I just expressed my opinion, so it shouldn't matter. Anyway, the honeymoon got cancelled. Are you kidding me? I was looking forward to going together and having a great time. Why were you trying to come with us on the honeymoon in the first place? Well, traveling is fun, you know. Besides, if we go together, you would pay for it, right? I can't even begin to understand your mindset with that kind of thinking. It would be lucky if I can go with your treat. It's amazing to be able to go together and have fun at a lower cost, right? Honestly, you're such a... It's really disappointing that you assume that you can enjoy other people's money. Why is that? You're a grown adult, aren't you? I don't want you to keep thinking that I'll treat you forever. But you're my big sister! Isn't it normal to spend money for your little sister? Is that normal? 
I think your idea of normal is a bit off from the general consensus. Is that so? Instead of relying on me forever, you should stand on your own. Okay, okay. By the way, if you ever make plans for another honeymoon trip, make sure to let me know. Why? Because I'm going with you. Count me in when that time comes. Were you even listening to me? I was listening, but it doesn't matter. I want to go together. I don't have any plans to go on a honeymoon trip anytime soon. Even if I do decide to go, I will definitely not tell you. Why not? I want you to make plans for a honeymoon trip right away for your adorable little sister. It's not possible to go on a trip until things settle down. I absolutely want you to take me with you. Count me in when the time comes. If you want to go on a honeymoon trip that much, you can come with me. However, if you save up your own money and use that, I don't mind going together. Don't expect me to pay for you. We'll see you later. One month later. Jenna! What's up? What's going on? I'm having the best time here. Oh, really? That's great to hear. By the way, what's so great? What are you up to right now? I was thinking of joining you on the honeymoon trip. I'm already visiting the travel destination before you. Huh? What do you mean? Pretending not to know is pointless. I'm not pretending. What do you mean? I told you before that we're not going on a honeymoon trip anymore, right? Yeah, but I can't believe that it got cancelled. It must be a lie. It's not a lie, you know. It's not fair to have fun just by yourselves. I said I'll go with you too. Anyway, I'll be waiting. Where are you waiting? Stop pretending you don't know. The trip starts today, right? I'm telling you, the trip got cancelled. My husband's grandfather was like a parent to him, so it's a difficult time for him. I'm not in the mood for a trip. It's not like we can forcibly go on a honeymoon trip at any time like this. Enough with the excuses already. Why don't you believe me when I'm saying all this? Is there a reason you don't believe me? Of course there is. What is it? You went back to our parents' house the other day, right? Yes, I went back. I saw you carrying luggage for the trip at that time. Oh, that... So even though you said that the honeymoon trip was cancelled, I realized that it actually wasn't cancelled. It's true that I had luggage with me, but... I knew it! You're going on the trip, aren't you? No, it's not a trip. The luggage I brought at that time was for staying at my husband's family's house. Are you kidding me? Are you still trying to deceive me? I thought that if I asked you to go together, you would definitely refuse, so I came early to the destination. Huh? Came early? What do you mean? Exactly! Came early! If I'm already at the destination before you, you won't be able to refuse and will take me on the honeymoon trip together, right? Well, if you're already at the destination before me, I can't really refuse. I understand that you came up with a plan on your own, but we're not there. Hey! It's a joke, right? It's not a joke. It's true. Moreover, I'm staying at my husband's family's house, completely opposite to a honeymoon trip. Is that true? Are you really staying at your husband's family's house? But you had so much luggage with you. I've been saying that from the beginning, haven't I? Then what about the luxury hotel reservation that was booked for the honeymoon trip according to the itinerary? Wait, did you sneak a look at the itinerary without permission? Honestly, you can be so exasperating. I'm your little sister, so there's no problem, right? Besides, I've already canceled all the hotel reservations, of course. All of them? Canceled? That's why there's no problem at all. Were you worried about me? Well, it's not that I was worried. That's really troublesome. Of course it is. If I didn't cancel them, I would have to pay and it would go all to waste. Hold on a second. That's really inconvenient for me. Why are you troubled? Because we were supposed to stay together today. What are you talking about? I was planning for us to stay in the same suite room. What are you saying? It's unthinkable for us to stay in the same suite room at the same hotel. It's my honeymoon trip. What are you thinking? I didn't hear anything about canceling all the hotel reservations. Just make a reservation at any hotel right now. Anywhere will do. If the trip is canceled, the hotel reservations will be canceled too, won't they? Please, make a hotel reservation right now for today. I have nowhere to stay tonight if you don't. Do it yourself. Of course, I'm asking you to make the reservation, and please use your own money. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. Why do I have to make the hotel reservations for you using my own money? Please, I'm begging you. 
It's you who's going on the trip, right? Take responsibility for yourself. I truly can't believe it. Well, I'm getting married soon too, you know. It's perfect as a wedding gift. How many times do I have to give you the wedding gifts? I've already given you wedding gifts multiple times. Don't try to make me say wedding gift to make me pay again. You're mean, big sister. It's not about being mean, you know. It's because you always do things on your own, without thinking, that we end up in situations like this, right? If you don't make hotel reservations right away, I also have a plan on my side. What kind of plan? Are you coming up with another strange strategy? Seriously, spare me. Take more responsibility for your own actions. Won't you make the hotel reservation? Well, in that case, I have an ace up my sleeve too, you know. What do you mean by ace up your sleeve? I'm currently having a meal at a fancy restaurant. I'll pay for both of our meals with your credit card. What's this? And to make matters worse, you stole my credit card when I thought it was missing yesterday? Yeah, I took it out of your wallet when I was at our parents' house. This is unbelievable. It's not that big of a deal, really. Taking someone's credit card out of their wallet without permission is a big deal. Well, I'll use that credit card to pay for the meal, then. Do you realize what would happen if I reported you for this? Are you threatening me? I'm not threatening you, but stealing someone's belongings is a crime. Hold on a second. We're sisters, right? Isn't it a bit too much to make such a big deal out of it? Even as sisters, there are limits to what is acceptable. You don't have to get so angry about something like this. Your actions have crossed the line. It's absolutely unacceptable to take someone's credit card without permission. And on top of that, expecting me to pay for the meal is outrageous. Anyway, I'm asking you to cover the cost of both of us. Don't use my credit card without permission. Pay for your own meal. I'll rely on my big sister to handle the payment. Well then, see you later. 15 minutes later. Hey! What now? My credit card isn't working. Well, of course. What happened? I thought I lost my credit card yesterday, so I made it unusable. No way! It means it's suspended? That's right. I was hoping to have you pay for the meal. That's too bad. This is what happens when you go around stealing people's things without permission. 30 minutes later. It's because of you that I have to pay for the meal myself. It's not my fault. Of course not. You enjoyed a delicious meal at an upscale restaurant. I was having such a great time in the best mood at the upscale restaurant, but now it's the worst feeling. That's too bad. When you buy something, go somewhere, or have a meal, you have to pay with your own money. Didn't you know that? I know that already. Don't make fun of me. Well, it would have been nice if you had known. I'm relieved. You should be glad that you didn't go as far as using my credit card for criminal activity, shouldn't you? It's really exaggerated to call it a crime. You should think more about your own actions, shouldn't you? His mood turned sour because of this. That's not my problem, is it? What will you do if he starts disliking me? If he dislikes me, it'll be your fault. Who is he? You mentioned him earlier when talking about the dinner bill for two. He is just him. Who exactly are you traveling with? It's obviously my boyfriend, isn't it? Really? Are you doubting me? It's not like I'm doubting you or anything. But what is it? Just say it clearly. Earlier, when I was heading to my husband's parents' house, I happened to run into Gage, your boyfriend, at the station. Oh, I see. He didn't mention anything about going on a trip. Well, maybe we just didn't talk about that. Are you really going on a trip with Gage? It doesn't matter who it is, right? Who is it, really? Well, he's just a close male friend of mine. You have your wedding in a month, right? Yes, but... And yet you're going on a trip with your close male friend? Yes, but, you know, in this day and age, it's normal. It's normal to go on a trip with another man when you're engaged? Your thinking is outdated. Is that so? I just can't understand it. But you don't need to tell Gage about this, okay? Why? Anyway, even if you ask me something, keep this a secret from Gage, okay? So you're saying you're going on a trip with him without Gage knowing? That's right. It's okay to have a little fun before getting married, right? That's your opinion, so I won't say anything about it. We're getting married soon anyway, just for now. It's fine to have some fun, 
but I think it's better not to do something that would hurt the other person. I know that already. Personally, I wouldn't like it if my fiancé went on a trip with someone of the opposite sex before getting married. Well, I didn't ask for your opinion, and I'm saying that such thinking is outdated. Is that so? Even if times change, don't people's feelings remain somewhat the same? I think it's natural to dislike things you find unpleasant. Gage is the son of a company president. Once we're married, I'll be able to live a life of luxury. So don't you dare get in the way. Do you love Gage? Or are you after his money? It's obvious that it's both. If you love him, there isn't any need to go off with another man just for fun. Never tell Gage about this, okay? Well, it seems like my husband already told Gage about it. Huh? Why? That can't be true. That's why Gage knows that you're on a trip with your closest male friend. Why did your husband need to contact Gage and tell him about this? It's because my husband doesn't like you. Why does your husband dislike me? When you and I were communicating, my husband was right next to me. When was that? Remember when you referred my husband's grandfather as just an old man? It was at that time. But for him, his grandfather is like a parent and a cherished person, so he didn't appreciate your choice of words. So he dislikes me because of that? Yes, and it seems like he felt belittled by you. And because of that, your husband told Gage about me? That's right. But, you know, if you thought that your dear sister might suffer, couldn't your husband have refrained from telling him? Well, considering what you're doing and saying, this outcome is only natural. Natural? Yes, you're playing around with other men just before getting married, right? Even if it means risking not being able to marry him if he finds out, it doesn't matter to you, right? I don't want that. Isn't that contradictory? It's just a casual fling. You might think that way, but if you truly love him, have you considered his feelings? Anyway, watching your actions, I wondered if it was necessary to stop my husband from telling Gage. What's that? Aren't you my sister? Shouldn't you protect me? Exactly. Because you're my sister, I think it's my role to let you know that you're doing something wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong, okay? Even if you don't think you're wrong, it's not just about you. Marriage is not something you do alone. Your thinking is too outdated. It's pointless to discuss it. I don't care what you say. What will you do if my marriage with Gage gets called off because of you guys? Isn't it because of your actions? He doesn't know that I've been having fun. My husband already told Gage about you, and it seems like Gage already noticed that you might be cheating. What? Are you serious? Gage is aware of my infidelity? It seems like Gage noticed. I guess he had suspicions about this trip, too. What? Really? Is that true? I haven't spoken directly with him, so I don't know. But my husband told me about his conversation with Gage, and he mentioned that... No way! He didn't show any signs of that at all! There may not be any evidence, or maybe he couldn't bring himself to say it. Yeah, you're right. There probably isn't any evidence. Remember when I said I saw Gage at the station earlier? Yes? What was he doing? He was actually talking to you to confirm your infidelity. Wait, hold on. You're kidding, right? I think it's true because he said so. I wonder if he's aware of what I've been doing. It seems like he is. He hasn't said anything like that to me at all. He wouldn't tell you the truth directly, would he? Well, that's true. He's an adult too. I believe he's been thinking and taking action on various matters. I had no idea he was tailing me. It's useless to dwell on things now. What do you mean it's useless? Gage believed in you, but he was worried because things have been getting too strange for him. So? Is he thinking of breaking up with me? That's something he will decide, so I don't know. What should I do if we break up? Well, it seems like he wanted to confirm the truth today, so he followed you. What should I do? Hey, please, please help me. We're just a little bit away from getting married. If, by any chance, the marriage falls apart, it's because you betrayed him, and there's nothing we can do about it. I absolutely don't want it to end like this, so please, help me. Asking for help is impossible. I want to marry him. I want to have a wealthy life. Even if you tell me that, there's nothing I can do. It will be up to him to decide what to do. He followed me and already knows that I'm with another man, right? Yes, that's right. The affair trip has been exposed, and Gage has been feeling anxious, suspecting that you were cheating all along. No way! I think he's convinced of your infidelity. Please, find a way. Explain it to him well from your side. Maybe it's better to give up at this point. Don't abandon me! 
Please, find a way for me to still marry him. I need your help. Some days later. Listen to me for a moment. What's wrong? Did something happen? My engagement with Gage has been called off. Oh, I see. That's unfortunate. I just don't know what to do anymore. I'm really at a loss about what comes next. Calm down. I can't calm down. That's true. If the engagement has been called off, there's no way we can stay calm. What should I do from now on? Did he break off the engagement because of your infidelity? Yes. And not only that, since we can't get married, I can no longer live in the luxury apartment we were supposed to live in together. That's too bad, wasn't it? We were so close to getting married. It's truly unfortunate. I told our parents about the engagement being called off the other day. So you've already told them? Yes. Gage explained the reasons for breaking off the engagement to our parents. And then, what did they say? They kicked me out of the house. I was forced to leave our family home. Is that so? Moreover, I received a severe scolding from our parents. Oh my, that's truly unfortunate. But considering you cheated and got into this situation, it's unavoidable, isn't it? What's with your attitude since earlier? Why are you suddenly angry at me? The way you said that's unfortunate is really infuriating. Well, I genuinely thought that it was unfortunate. I'm expressing my true feelings, you know. In the first place, this happened because you didn't treat me well, and your husband went and told Gage about my infidelity, right? Hold on a moment. Are you trying to blame us for the broken engagement? But it's true, isn't it? No, it's not. If your husband hadn't gone and told him, none of this would have happened. Even if he hadn't told him, I think the engagement would have been called off. What kind of statement is that? I can't believe it. The reason for your broken engagement is not our fault. If your husband hadn't told him, this wouldn't have happened. That's not true. It's because of your actions. Please don't blame us for it. Are you saying it's because of my actions? Yes. That's not true. If your husband hadn't told him, this wouldn't have happened. Since you caused this, you better take care of me from now on. The cause lies in what you've done. And what do you mean by me taking care of you? Before my husband told Gage, he was already suspicious of your infidelity and had been following you. It's because you went on a trip with another man before getting married, right? If I had married Gage, I would have lived in a luxury apartment, and he would have provided our living expenses too. Just because of that, why should we be the ones to support you? Since this happened, you should take responsibility for it. Will you provide for me to live in the apartment and have enough income to sustain my life? What are you saying? Do you even realize what you've done? There is no way we would have provided for you. Work and support yourself financially. Anyway, since this has come to this, I won't be satisfied unless he takes responsibility. The reason the engagement was called off is because of your actions. That's not true. Since you don't seem to realize it yourself, let me explain why it turned out this way. Can you even explain it? It's all because of you guys. Of course I can explain it. Then do it quickly. The reason the engagement was called off is because you went on a trip with another man. Well, that may be true, but he didn't realize it. You're the only one who thinks he didn't realize it. That's not true. When I met him at the station that day, he had already suspected your infidelity because of your strange behavior. So the fact is, this has nothing to do with us. And there were issues with your actions. Are you aware of that? Your dear sister is in trouble, so it wouldn't hurt for you to help out with some money this time, would it? See? That's how you change the subject when this becomes inconvenient. And what do you mean by this time? You didn't pay me for the meal, did you? So this time would be fine, right? I've put up with your selfishness almost every time just because I didn't pay last time. How much do you think I've been paying for you? I don't know, but for the sake of my dear sister, it wouldn't hurt to help out this time too, right? I've always been paying for my dear sister's sake, but have you ever shown gratitude to me? I don't think so, right? I'm always grateful. That's a lie. It's for the sake of your dear sister, isn't it? See, that's how you think it's only natural for your older sister, me, to pay. I don't really think it's natural or anything, but in the end, you always end up paying, so I've been taking advantage of it. Even when I refuse, you keep insisting and making me pay for this and that. But you didn't pay for me the other day. Why should I have to pay for your food expenses too? You're a grown adult, so figure it out on your own, won't you? When I'm in trouble, someone always comes to help me. That's a misunderstanding, you know. 
Until now, I've put up with it because you're my sister, but I can't do it anymore. What do you mean you can't do it anymore? I've done so much for you, but I don't even receive gratitude, and your request has become even more excessive. I've reached my limit. From now on, I'll make sure to express my gratitude properly. You never show gratitude anyway, and you don't understand my feelings. You'll just forget about this conversation right away, won't you? That's not true. Well, why don't you try working and earning money to understand how challenging it is? I can live without working anyway. You're able to live because of Gage, right? It's because I'm the one who's been providing you with money, isn't it? Well, that's true, but... You understand that such a lifestyle can't continue indefinitely, right? He called off the engagement as well. If you want to live in luxury apartments, figure it out on your own. Don't keep relying on others for your livelihood. I'm not going to give you any more money. From now on, don't depend on me and find a way to manage on your own. I... Even if you suddenly say that, what do you expect me to do? The other day, you took my credit card from my wallet without permission. It's absolutely unacceptable. Right now, I can only see you as a criminal. It's not that serious as you're making it out to be. I just meant it like a little prank. A prank? Even if you're my sister, stealing someone's belongings is unforgivable, and it's a crime. I didn't really mean it that way. Even though you're making me feel so terrible, you don't even say a word of apology, do you? I'm sorry. It's too late. I've put up with a lot until now, but I've reached my limit too. What you did goes beyond a lot more than a mere prank, and I only see you as a criminal. I don't want to pay for your sake anymore, and I don't want to have any contact with you. Please don't say that. I'm your sister after all. If you think of me as your sister, I want you to realize how horribly you've treated me all this time. I am not the only person who is here to support your lifestyle. Stop asking for money all the time. I never intended that, and I don't think of you that way. Anyway... I don't want any contact from now on, so don't reach out to me. I will block your messages. Don't say that! I have nothing more to say to you. I can't deal with you anymore. Goodbye. Thereafter. When I told my parents about what happened to me, they explained that my sister's personality is influenced by our grandmother. It seems that our grandmother had a similar personality and ended up being abandoned by those around her and died alone. My sister seemed to be aware of our grandmother's situation but she thinks it doesn't concern her. They are alike in accepting convenient things and rejecting inconvenient ones, and my parents were exasperated by both of them. Afterward, she never worked on her own and sought to rely on men for her livelihood, searching for wealthy men to marry, but she ended up being deceived in a marriage scam. In the end, she ended up accumulating debt and had no choice but to engage in risky jobs. It's her own doing, but if she had listened to the opinions of those around her even a little, her life could have been happier. My newlywed life has finally settled down, and I was able to go on a honeymoon. I'm truly living in blissful days. Mike and I have been married for five years. We have a lovely four-year-old daughter. He is kind, and we have not gotten into any serious arguments. We are great together. That's what people say. Evening. Sally, we've been married for five years. Our lovely daughter's already turned four. What's up, Mike? Why are you saying all that stuff all of a sudden? What's going on? Listen, Sally. I realized that you did all the house chores and babysitting for this five years. That's not true. You helped me out even though you were tired after your work. I thank you always. Without you, I'll go crazy. Can't live without you. This is too much, Mike. What the hell is going on? What the hell happened? I just want to give you something. Tickets for the play you've wanted to go to. The one the actor you like is playing. The tickets? The one I've wanted to go to? Wow, that's amazing! I'm happy that you are happy. I just didn't know how to give them to you. Embarrassing enough, it became a huge deal. I managed to get two tickets. You should go enjoy with your best friend. I'll look after our daughter next weekend. Again, thank you, Sally. Mike, I thank you, really. I love our daughter, but it's been difficult to have my own time. I was giving up on seeing my friends and going to the play. Surely, since you are kind, that's what I thought. Leave it to me. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, Mike. I love you. I love you too, Sally. Three nights later. I had so much fun today. Thanks for coming with me. And sorry that I can't do dinner. That's fine, Sally. 
This was a play I've wanted to see. We'll do dinner some other time. Sure, we will. You said your daughter caught a cold. You take care of yourself. You may catch one for yourself. Thanks a lot. See you around. Soliloquy. Mike, I'm home. Oh? Whose are these red high heels? I have not worn high heels since we had our daughter. A voice from the living room? Sounds like Mike is talking with a woman. Sounds like he's having a lot of fun. Seems like they are too close to be just friends. Could it be an affair? I shall wait and see. I can hide in the bathroom. I can catch their talks from there. I will text him from the bathroom. There is no smoke without fire. Ten minutes later. Mike, how's it going? Hey, Sally. The play's over. How was it? Yeah, it was pretty great. I was thinking to talk about it over dinner and then go home. But I think I'll call it a night now. I miss our daughter. That's good. Well, I've got her. Don't worry, Sally. Go get yourself dinner. You never know when is the next chance. But how is she? I'm concerned. She just had her dinner and now is sleeping after taking the pill. When she wakes up feeling better, I'll give her a bath. To be honest, I was a little worried. Kids' colds can be serious. So just in case, I asked my friend who was a nurse to come over to take a look at her. Just in case something happens. Oh, I didn't know that. Surely that is a great help. But I feel terrible that I'm not here with you. Don't worry, Sally. You've been looking forward to today. You're right, Mike. I won't be late. Soliloquy. No response from Mike. Is he talking with the nurse in the living room? The moment Mike stopped texting me back, there was a cheerful voice from the living room. How is she? Sleeping? A woman asked. Yeah. Finally, it's just the two of us. Answered Mike eagerly. My wife won't be home for a while, so let's enjoy the night. Mike added. Now I was sure that he was cheating on me. Shocked, I texted my mother. Ten minutes later. Mom, sorry at this hour. Can we talk? Hi, Sally. What's up? Well, I just came across Mike having an affair. So I want to stay with you with my daughter. Is that okay? What? Mike is having an affair? Are you sure? I don't know. It seemed like it to me. Look, I was going out today, but I came home early since my daughter wasn't feeling well. Then I just found Mike with some random woman in the living room. I texted Mike. He said he has a friend of his who is a nurse. Well then, isn't that woman the nurse? But she wasn't really examining my daughter. She was in pretty clothing, not the white uniform, with red high heels. She was only talking with Mike, seemed excited that my daughter is sleeping and now it's just the two of them in the living room. Well, that doesn't sound right. Okay, come over with your daughter. I'll talk with your dad. Mom, thank you. I'm coming soon. Late at night. Sally, she's gone. Where the heck could she have gone feeling sick? You two? Where are you? It's midnight. You two are gone. Were you kidnapped? Please reply, Sally. Mike, calm down. I'm fine. Oh my god, Sally. I was so worried about you. Where the fuck are you? Oh no, we need to find our daughter. Should we call the police? No need. She is with me at my parents. Huh? What? W what does that mean, Sally? I don't understand. Like I said, Mike, I'm back at my parents with my daughter. Why? Why are you doing this? She is sick and should be at home. You know that, don't you? Why did you need to take her to your parents? Explain, Sally. Mike, the nurse you asked to come over is quite a woman, isn't she? Wearing red high heels to visit a patient. She didn't take care of my daughter. She was taking care of you. Only you. You too seemed like you were having fun. I had no idea that you made me go out to have an affair at our home. What the fuck? I don't know what you saw, but I asked her to come over for our daughter. I would never cheat on you. Why did you show up if you were at home anyway? Liar! You were enjoying yourself since I was not there. How can I show up just like I'm home? This motherfucker! Hold on, Sally. If you say so, have you got any evidence that I cheated on you? A single picture, a record of a conversation, or anything? Huh? Evidence? You don't, do you? Of course you don't, since I didn't cheat on you. 
You don't have any evidence of me cheating, do you? No, I do not. It's just me that saw and heard. That's what I thought. You must have been tired going out after a long time. You saw wrong and you heard wrong. I talked with the nurse, but about our daughter. I might have said I have a lovely wife. Maybe you heard that part. Isn't that why you thought you heard me telling sweet words to the nurse? That can't be true. I surely saw and heard you getting intimate with that woman. I'm a little tired, Sally. Proving myself innocent is very difficult. We should separate for a while until we both calm down, Sally. You and her can stay there. We'll talk later. I'm a bit hurt being blamed and doubted by the person I love. I don't want both of us to get hurt keeping this talk. Okay. I'll call you later. Yeah. I love you, Sally. Late at night. Message to a friend. Hey, are you there? Mike may be cheating on me. What? The kind husband who got the tickets for you? What on earth happened? Look, he brought in a woman while I was out, leaving our poor daughter who was sick. No way! Brought in a woman, keeping his wife away and leaving his daughter? That must be an affair. What a dick! You think so? Yeah. I have an idea. Why don't you hire a P.I.? We can confront Mike with evidence that he insists doesn't exist. P.I.? Isn't that too much? There's nothing too much for you and your daughter. If nothing is found, you can be sure after all. Well, you have a point. Okay, I will find a P.I. Sally, this may be hard for you, but I am always on your side. You can talk to me anytime. Once all is settled, we should hang out. Thank you. I wouldn't hire a P.I. if you weren't here to suggest it. I'll let you know. One week later. Mike, you got a moment? Oh, Sally. Finally, I've been waiting for you. Of course I have. Well, I'd like to talk about our future. Is that okay? Sure. You're coming home, right? We can talk it over at our home. You and her are coming home. I'll order a pizza or something. Which pizza should I get? Ask her. What time will you be getting there? Hold on. I have something to show you. Look at these pictures. This is when you went shopping with her last week, isn't it? You bought her a fancy luxury bag as a Christmas gift. How nice. Sally, what's going on? I hired a PI to investigate if you're cheating on me. If nothing was found, I could be relieved and could apologize to you that I misunderstood. But pictures and records of conversations? So much evidence I couldn't help but laugh. This is after shopping at the expensive restaurant at the top floor of XXXXX Hotel. This is when you came home with her, holding hands to fuck in our home. Who is this? I mean, yeah, this is the nurse I asked to come over, but I don't think the guy is me. What? What are you talking about? You think that stupid excuse works in situations like this, Mike? It's not an excuse. I really don't know. I don't remember. Believe me, Sally, I didn't do it. That's a lie! Pictures aren't the only evidence I got. Speaking of, if you insist that the guy in these pictures isn't you, I have sent your parents these pictures and records of conversations. They surely know better. They wouldn't mistake their own son and his voice, would they? What the? You sent them to my parents? Yes, I did. All the pictures and records of conversations. Why don't we call them now? Tell them I think the guy in the pictures and conversations is Mike, but he says no, and ask what they think. Of course. Of course they'll say it's me. I'm sorry, Sally. I cheated on you. I did. She seduced me. But it means nothing. Forgive me. My heart is all yours. How dare you, Mike? We should get divorced. No way. A divorce? Yes, a divorce. Far from a kind husband, you left your poor daughter and kept me away to have an affair. You are no good to my daughter, for sure. Wait a minute. If we get divorced, what about my job? You're telling me to go unemployed? Now what? Since you work at my dad's company, are you afraid to lose your job when we get divorced? How the hell should I know? Well, my parents know about us, so you can't expect nothing will happen, can you? Oh no, that woman is my colleague, too. If something happens, her and I will get in trouble. Wasn't she a nurse? I really don't care. I have nothing to do with it. Sally, your father. You have nothing to do with him, too? What do you mean, Mike? We work at the same company every day. 
When you are not around, when no one is watching over, I can harm him if I want to. Like today, I can go to work and harm him already. Are you still telling me to get divorced? Mike, unfortunately for you, to watch over our conversation, my dad took a day off today. Of course, he was reading our conversation from the beginning. Huh? Is, is that true? Yes. My dad is with me by my side. Mike, you could be charged for intimidation. I had no idea how threatening you are. I can't believe it. No way. I just got a bit emotional. I didn't know what to do. I just want to be back with you and our daughter. Please understand. I made a mistake. This will not happen again, I swear. I promise. No more cheating. No more threatening to you or your family. Sally, please. Mike, I hate to say this, but I cannot stand someone who will cheat on me or intimidate me. No matter what you say, this doesn't change. And, my dad says he'll give you a call to discuss something important. Sally, a lifelong request. Please, please forgive me. I'll devote my life to you. I do not need your life. Suffer as much as you can. Hold on, Sally. You can't leave me like this. Please listen to me. I'll do whatever you want. Please, Sally. Thereafter. I blocked him without responding. With evidence of an affair, everything went smooth and we got divorced. Five years of marriage just ended as if it was nothing. No need to mention, I was given the custody. My dad didn't let Mike go, but he was sent to a country where he should find difficulty as a city boy. The woman couldn't stay and resigned from work because of the gossip. I received compensation from both Mike and the woman who had an affair, knowing he is married and with a child. Also, child support from Mike. Speaking of Mike, he is in debt to pay me compensation and child support, and to pay his debt back. He started a night shift in addition to his day job. He can't keep doing that too long, but it's none of my business. Actually, because of what happened, his parents cut him off. I heard that he lives lonely with his debt. I guess things did not work out between him and the woman. Mike now has lost everyone involved. Me, my daughter, his parents, and the woman. All alone. On the contrary, me, I sold our house and joined my parents with my daughter. My parents are happy to be with us. My daughter seems to be happy with them. Me too, as I forget the days I cried over Mike. I am living happily ever after. Mike and I have been married for five years. We have a lovely four-year-old daughter. He is kind, and we have not gotten into any serious arguments. We are great together. That's what people say. Evening. Sally, we've been married for five years. Our lovely daughter's already turned four. What's up, Mike? Why are you saying all that stuff all of a sudden? What's going on? Listen, Sally. I realized that you did all the house chores and babysitting for this five years. That's not true. You helped me out even though you were tired after your work. I thank you always. Without you, I'll go crazy. Can't live without you. This is too much, Mike. What the hell is going on? What the hell happened? I just want to give you something. Tickets for the play you've wanted to go to. The one the actor you like is playing. The tickets? The one I've wanted to go to? Wow, that's amazing! I'm happy that you are happy. I just didn't know how to give them to you. Embarrassing enough, it became a huge deal. I managed to get two tickets. You should go enjoy with your best friend. I'll look after our daughter next weekend. Again, thank you, Sally. Mike, I thank you, really. I love our daughter, but it's been difficult to have my own time. I was giving up on seeing my friends and going to the play. Surely, since you are kind. That's what I thought. Leave it to me. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, Mike. I love you. I love you too, Sally. Three nights later. I had so much fun today. Thanks for coming with me. And sorry that I can't do dinner. That's fine, Sally. This was a play I've wanted to see. We'll do dinner some other time. Sure, we will. You said your daughter caught a cold. You take care of yourself. You may catch one for yourself. Thanks a lot. See you around. Soliloquy. Mike, I'm home. Oh? Whose are these red high heels? I have not worn high heels since we had our daughter. A voice from the living room? Sounds like Mike is talking with a woman. Sounds like he's having a lot of fun. 
Seems like they are too close to be just friends. Could it be an affair? I shall wait and see. I can hide in the bathroom. I can catch their talks from there. I will text them from the bathroom. There is no smoke without fire. Ten minutes later. Mike, how's it going? Hey, Sally. The play's over. How was it? Yeah, it was pretty great. I was thinking to talk about it over dinner and then go home. But I think I'll call it a night now. I miss our daughter. That's good. Well, I've got her. Don't worry, Sally. Go get yourself dinner. You never know when is the next chance. But how is she? I'm concerned. She just had her dinner and now is sleeping after taking the pill. When she wakes up feeling better, I'll give her a bath. To be honest, I was a little worried. Kids' colds can be serious. So just in case, I asked my friend who was a nurse to come over to take a look at her. Just in case something happens. Oh, I didn't know that. Surely that is a great help. But I feel terrible that I'm not here with you. Don't worry, Sally. You've been looking forward to today. You're right, Mike. I won't be late. Soliloquy. No response from Mike. Is he talking with the nurse in the living room? The moment Mike stopped texting me back, there was a cheerful voice from the living room. How is she? Sleeping? A woman asked. Yeah, finally it's just the two of us, answered Mike eagerly. My wife won't be home for a while, so let's enjoy the night, Mike added. Now I was sure that he was cheating on me. Shocked, I texted my mother. Ten minutes later. Mom, sorry at this hour. Can we talk? Hi, Sally, what's up? Well, I just came across Mike having an affair, so I want to stay with you with my daughter. Is that okay? What? Mike is having an affair. Are you sure? I don't know. It seemed like it to me. Look, I was going out today, but I came home early since my daughter wasn't feeling well. Then I just found Mike with some random woman in the living room. I texted Mike. He said he has a friend of his who is a nurse. Well then, isn't that woman the nurse? But she wasn't really examining my daughter. She was in pretty clothing, not the white uniform, with red high heels. She was only talking with Mike, seemed excited that my daughter is sleeping, and now it's just the two of them in the living room. Well, that doesn't sound right. Okay, come over with your daughter. I'll talk with your dad. Mom, thank you. I'm coming soon. Late at night. Sally, she's gone. Where the heck could she have gone feeling sick? You too? Where are you? It's midnight. You two are gone. Were you kidnapped? Please reply, Sally. Mike, calm down. I'm fine. Oh my god, Sally. I was so worried about you. Where the fuck are you? Oh no, we need to find our daughter. Should we call the police? No need. She is with me at my parents. Huh? What? W what does that mean, Sally? I don't understand. Like I said, Mike, I'm back at my parents with my daughter. Why? Why are you doing this? She is sick and should be at home. You know that, don't you? Why did you need to take her to your parents? Explain, Sally. Mike, the nurse you asked to come over is quite a woman, isn't she? Wearing red high heels to visit a patient. She didn't take care of my daughter. She was taking care of you. Only you. You too seemed like you were having fun. I had no idea that you made me go out to have an affair at our home. What the fuck? I don't know what you saw, but I asked her to come over for our daughter. I would never cheat on you. Why did you show up if you were at home anyway? Liar! You were enjoying yourself since I was not there. How can I show up just like I'm home? This motherfucker! Hold on, Sally. If you say so, have you got any evidence that I cheated on you? A single picture, a record of a conversation, or anything? Huh? Evidence? You don't, do you? Of course you don't, since I didn't cheat on you. You don't have any evidence of me cheating, do you? No, I do not. It's just me that saw and heard. That's what I thought. You must have been tired going out after a long time. You saw wrong and you heard wrong. I talked with the nurse, but about our daughter. I might have said I have a lovely wife. Maybe you heard that part. Isn't that why you thought you heard me telling sweet words to the nurse? That can't be true. I surely saw and heard you getting intimate with that woman. I'm a little tired, Sally. Proving myself innocent is very difficult. 
We should separate for a while until we both calm down, Sally. You and her can stay there. We'll talk later. I'm a bit hurt being blamed and doubted by the person I love. I don't want both of us to get hurt keeping this talk. Okay. I'll call you later. Yeah, I love you, Sally. Late at night. Message to a friend. Hey, are you there? Mike may be cheating on me. What? The kind husband who got the tickets for you? What on earth happened? Look, he brought in a woman while I was out, leaving our poor daughter who was sick. No way! Brought in a woman, keeping his wife away and leaving his daughter? That must be an affair. What a dick! You think so? Yeah. I have an idea. Why don't you hire a P.I.? We can confront Mike with evidence that he insists doesn't exist. P.I.? Isn't that too much? There's nothing too much for you and your daughter. If nothing is found, you can be sure after all. Well, you have a point. Okay, I will find a P.I. Sally, this may be hard for you, but I am always on your side. You can talk to me anytime. Once all is settled, we should hang out. Thank you. I wouldn't hire a P.I. if you weren't here to suggest it. I'll let you know. One week later. Mike, you got a moment? Oh, Sally. Finally, I've been waiting for you. Of course I have. Well, I'd like to talk about our future. Is that okay? Sure. You're coming home, right? We can talk it over at our home. You and her are coming home. I'll order a pizza or something. Which pizza should I get? Ask her. What time will you be getting there? Hold on. I have something to show you. Look at these pictures. This is when you went shopping with her last week, isn't it? You bought her a fancy luxury bag as a Christmas gift. How nice. Sally, what's going on? I hired a PI to investigate if you're cheating on me. If nothing was found, I could be relieved and could apologize to you that I misunderstood. But pictures and records of conversations? So much evidence I couldn't help but laugh. This is after shopping at the expensive restaurant at the top floor of XXXXX Hotel. This is when you came home with her, holding hands to fuck in our home. Who is this? I mean, yeah, this is the nurse I asked to come over, but I don't think the guy is me. What? What are you talking about? You think that stupid excuse works in situations like this, Mike? It's not an excuse. I really don't know. I don't remember. Believe me, Sally, I didn't do it. That's a lie! Pictures aren't the only evidence I got. Speaking of, if you insist that the guy in these pictures isn't you, I have sent your parents these pictures and records of conversations. They surely know better. They wouldn't mistake their own son and his voice, would they? What the? You sent them to my parents? Yes, I did. All the pictures and records of conversations. Why don't we call them now? Tell them I think the guy in the pictures and conversations is Mike, but he says no, and ask what they think. Of course. Of course they'll say it's me. I'm sorry, Sally. I cheated on you. I did. She seduced me. But it means nothing. Forgive me. My heart is all yours. How dare you, Mike? We should get divorced. No way. A divorce? Yes, a divorce. Far from a kind husband, you left your poor daughter and kept me away to have an affair. You are no good to my daughter, for sure. Wait a minute. If we get divorced, what about my job? You're telling me to go unemployed? Now what? Since you work at my dad's company, are you afraid to lose your job when we get divorced? How the hell should I know? Well, my parents know about us, so you can't expect nothing will happen, can you? Oh no, that woman is my colleague, too. If something happens, her and I will get in trouble. Wasn't she a nurse? I really don't care. I have nothing to do with it. Sally, your father. You have nothing to do with him, too? What do you mean, Mike? We work at the same company every day. When you are not around, when no one is watching over, I can harm him if I want to. Like today, I can go to work and harm him already. Are you still telling me to get divorced? Mike... Unfortunately for you, to watch over our conversation, my dad took a day off today. Of course, he was reading our conversation from the beginning. Huh? Is... is that true? Yes. My dad is with me by my side. Mike, you could be charged for intimidation. I had no idea how threatening you are. I can't believe it. No way. 
I just got a bit emotional. I didn't know what to do. I just want to be back with you and our daughter. Please understand. I made a mistake. This will not happen again, I swear. I promise. No more cheating. No more threatening to you or your family. Sally, please. Mike, I hate to say this, but I cannot stand someone who will cheat on me or intimidate me. No matter what you say, this doesn't change. And, my dad says he'll give you a call to discuss something important. Sally, a lifelong request. Please, please forgive me. I'll devote my life to you. I do not need your life. Suffer as much as you can. Hold on, Sally. You can't leave me like this. Please listen to me. I'll do whatever you want. Please, Sally. Thereafter. I blocked him without responding. With evidence of an affair, everything went smooth and we got divorced. Five years of marriage just ended as if it was nothing. No need to mention, I was given the custody. My dad didn't let Mike go, but he was sent to a country where he should find difficulty as a city boy. The woman couldn't stay and resigned from work because of the gossip. I received compensation from both Mike and the woman who had an affair, knowing he is married and with a child. Also, child support from Mike. Speaking of Mike, he is in debt to pay me compensation and child support, and to pay his debt back. He started a night shift in addition to his day job. He can't keep doing that too long, but it's none of my business. Actually, because of what happened, his parents cut him off. I heard that he lives lonely with his debt. I guess things did not work out between him and the woman. Mike now has lost everyone involved. Me, my daughter, his parents, and the woman. All alone. On the contrary, me, I sold our house and joined my parents with my daughter. My parents are happy to be with us. My daughter seems to be happy with them. Me too, as I forget the days I cried over Mike. I am living happily ever after. Hey, don't mess around, you traitor. You're going to hell, like you deserve. What? What are you suddenly talking about? What do you mean, suddenly? Are you seriously saying that? I don't understand the meaning. Why do I have to hear such things from you? Think about what you've done. Are you still holding a grudge about our divorce? It was a legally decided divorce. It's pointless to bring it up now. Huh? Who's digging up the fact that I divorced you now, of all times? Then what's the deal with suddenly insulting me? If you don't want to have a conversation, then don't approach me. It's you who doesn't understand. Then explain it properly. Do I have to say even these things for you to understand? Why didn't you come? Huh? Today, you weren't here, right? Wait a moment. What are you talking about? Why didn't I come for what? Even after I say all of this, you're still acting clueless. I don't understand the meaning. It's my mother's funeral. Funeral? Your mother's? That's right. This heartless woman. Wait a moment. Your mother passed away? Pretending like you don't know is pointless. I didn't hear anything like that. Don't be stupid. I sent it before. What are you talking about? Sent what? I don't know anything, okay? That can't be true. I definitely sent it to you. I'm looking back at the received messages now. But as I suspected, I didn't receive anything. Don't lie. I won't be fooled. How did you send it? It was an email. I sent it to your address. Hold on. Let me check again. You're probably going to say it didn't arrive anyway. It's pointless. I have the sending history on my end. When did you send it, then? Yesterday. Yesterday? That's right. I sent you an email yesterday afternoon, telling you to attend the funeral. I didn't receive a response, 
and now you've skipped today's funeral, too. Could it be? What is it? Did you finally remember? This. The subject was, Mother's Funeral, Come Attend. That email, right? That's right. It clearly reached you. You ignored it. Was this for real? Huh? That's obvious, isn't it? Yesterday was April 1st, right? It was April Fool's Day, so I thought it was a malicious prank message. What did you say? Don't joke around. I'm sorry, but I deleted it as soon as I saw it. I just found it in the trash folder now. Why would you delete it without permission? It was obviously an important email. I apologize for accidentally deleting it. But you also have a part to blame. It's my fault? Where does that even exist? Tell me. It's your habitual misconduct. Misconduct? You have the audacity to say that? Well, haven't you been telling low-quality lies on April Fool's Day for a while now? Huh? Don't you remember it yourself? I don't recall telling such lies. Like saying you won a billion yen in the lottery, and that you're done with me. That was just a joke. It wasn't something that could be dismissed as a joke. There's more. Like saying a relative got arrested for a bank robbery. That's the kind of lie that can be easily dismissed, so there's no problem. No problem, you say? Where is it fine? It caused a huge commotion, saying they needed bail money and all. You're the one who made a fuss without reason. It's not because I was worried about your relatives. You were constantly telling lies that toyed with people's emotions and caused pain. It's your fault for being gullible. Anyone with common sense would know it's a lie. Are you blaming my lack of intelligence for it? I'm disgusted. Don't make excuses just because you're frustrated about being fooled. It's not just about April Fool's Day. You're someone who casually tells lies on a regular basis, so I couldn't trust you. Especially this time. I couldn't believe it was true. Hey, don't mess around. Don't make it sound like it's my responsibility. You have a significant responsibility, too. No matter what, I've never lied about something like my mother's death. It's something that anyone can understand with a little thought. That's your own biased thinking. What do you mean by that? Because you've been constantly lying and deceiving people. It's impossible to simply believe something that sounds like a lie but is claimed to be true. How insolent. Don't change the subject. Is it even appropriate to inform such important news through just an email? An email is sufficient. You should have called. If you had, this misunderstanding wouldn't have happened. Are you trying to shift the blame just because you didn't notice the email? The responsibility lies with you. With emails, you never know when they'll end up in the spam folder. Are you setting my emails as spam? I'm not talking about that right now. You informed such important news through an easily missed email, and on top of that, you gave it a title that sounded like a lie. You really don't understand a thing, do you? It's you who doesn't understand. You never used to send emails in the first place. But you loved my mother, didn't you? Yes, of course. Unlike you, your mother was very kind to me. Yet you didn't even attend her funeral. That's why it makes me even more angry. It's heartbreaking that she passed away. And it's shocking that I couldn't say goodbye in the end. Honestly, I still wish it was a lie. Unfortunately, my mother really died. Why? 
She was fine last year, at the end of the year, wasn't she? It was an acute heart attack. She had a minor chronic illness since long ago. I see. She treated me like her own daughter. That's why you better gather money quickly. Huh? Money. It's money. You understand, right? Money? I don't understand. What are you talking about exactly? It's for the memorial service fee, obviously. Memorial service fee? My mother took care of us so much. It's normal to pay a memorial service fee as a gesture of gratitude, right? Um, by the way, how much is this memorial service fee supposed to be? Well, it depends on your feelings towards your mother-in-law, I guess. But at the very least, you should pay no less than $10,000. $10,000? That's an outrageous amount of money. I've never heard of such a thing before. What are you talking about? It's common cultural practice in Japan. It's called koden, or offering of condolence money. Japan? Why are we suddenly talking about Japanese culture here? I have relatives in Japan, you know. That's why I'm familiar with it. No, that's not what I meant. It's a wonderful culture, isn't it? Remembering the deceased and providing financial support. Huh? Funerals can be expensive, and it's a culture that considers the well-being of the surviving family members. Did that relative of yours really say such a thing? What's the matter? Are you doubting it? It's not that, but $10,000 is too high of an amount. I loved your mother, but I can't afford to give such a large sum. You don't have the right to refuse. You should apologize sincerely for not being present at the final farewell. Apologize to your mother with $10,000? She wouldn't say such a thing. Don't presume to speak for my mother's feelings. You're just a stranger to her, now. What is it? If we're strangers then I shouldn't have been called to the funeral. That's a separate issue. You should show gratitude for the help you received. I understand that there's a cultural practice like offering condolences in Japan. But this isn't Japan. That doesn't matter. We can adopt good cultures from anywhere. It's up to each individual's feelings to make it meaningful, right? No matter how different the culture is, you should understand that much. Feelings? Yes. I think it's a wonderful culture, but it shouldn't be forcibly demanded and given. What did you say? You're not going to pay? At the very least, I don't want to comply with such a one-sided and high-pressured demands. The amount of money is also very high. So you're saying you can't express your gratitude to my mother. What an ungrateful person you are. It's true that I couldn't attend the funeral, and it's been very difficult for me. But I do visit the grave and offer plenty of flowers. Isn't that a way to express feelings towards the deceased? Flowers, you say? What difference does that make? Don't say ridiculous things. Hey, what is it? Aren't you ultimately just after money? Huh? What kind of baseless accusation is that? That's how it seems to me when you use your mother's death as a way to demand money from people. When did I ever do such a thing? Right now. You've been talking about money only since earlier. That, that's not true. Don't make unfounded claims. Hit the nail on the head, didn't I? But it's clearly strange. 
bringing up the culture of another country out of nowhere. I just happened to hear about a good culture and thought it was worth mentioning. Then ask your so-called relatives in Japan if it's normal for a condolence gift to cost $10,000. If you won't ask them yourself, I'll find out. That's... If you won't bother, I'll do the research. You're so annoying. It seems like you don't even care about mourning your own mother-in-law. I am mourning. A lot, actually. If you can't pay, then don't claim to be mourning. Why? Money has nothing to do with the feeling of mourning someone's death. Fine. If that's how you feel, then I'll come directly to collect it myself. What are you talking about? There's no way you can collect it by force. Oh, I will. It'll be an enforcement. Two days later. Jack? There's something I want to ask you. What is it? Have you decided to pay the money? Earlier, I returned home, and the window was open. Oh? I'm sure I locked it before leaving in the morning. Besides, the house was ransacked. That's terrible. The drawers were emptied, and the entire chest was a mess. I thought it might be a burglar. Well, who knows? Just before I was about to call the police... I remembered something. I might actually know who the culprit is. Oh, really? And? Could it be that you came to my house without me knowing? Oh, yeah, I did. Just a little while ago. What? What exactly do you intend to do? I told you before, didn't I? I went to collect it. Collect what? Your mother's condolence money or something? That's right. If you have no intention of paying, then I have no choice but to collect it forcibly. I can't believe this. Are you out of your mind? You're the one who's out of your mind. Not repaying any gratitude to the mother who took care of you? There's something wrong with you. You just want money for yourself, not for your mother, right? Don't use your mother as a shield. It doesn't matter what you say. When someone refuses to pay what they owe, sometimes you have to take it by force, right? Do you even realize what you're doing? This is a legitimate claim. Well, there was only about $300 anyway. You stole it? Stole is such an unpleasant word to hear. But with that amount, it doesn't even come close to what I'm claiming. I'll make sure you pay the remaining balance in full. I'm going to sue you for this. Don't think you can get away with it for free. Sue me? What crime are you planning to sue me for? First, I'll sue you for unlawful entry. I'm going to report it to the police. The police won't bother with such family disputes. Family disputes? You and I are strangers. We've been divorced for a long time. If you're really determined to sue, I have my own idea. An idea? I'll sue you, too. What are you talking about? There's no fault on my part to be sued for. I'm going to claim compensation from you. Compensation? Compensation for what? Everything. You disregarded and insulted the death of my mother. I don't want to hear such things from you. You're the one disrespecting the death of your mother. Huh? Because that's the truth. You're just using your mother's death as an excuse to demand money. And on top of that, this burglary-like situation. Hey, did you say burglary? I'm genuinely furious at your pathetic excuse. The house is also in complete disarray. I'm going to involve the police. I can't handle this on my own anymore. 
Even I got injured because of you. Take responsibility. Huh? Injured? What are you talking about? When I entered through the window of your house, I scraped my back on the window frame. My shirt even got torn. Are you kidding me? It's your own fault, isn't it? It's because you're not paying the money that things have come to this. Originally, this kind of hassle wasn't necessary. I'm appalled. Anyway, $300 is nowhere near the right amount. I'll come back another day to collect the remaining balance. What? You're saying you'll come back again? Of course I am. I'll come back as many times as it takes until I receive $10,000. You're frightening. I can't believe it. If you find it scary, then just pay the money already. Don't you understand what you're doing? I'll come again, so be prepared. Oh, by the way, don't forget to prepare the compensation. I'm adding that too. What? Wait a minute. Hey! Next day. Hey, something terrible has happened. What is going on here? You must know something. Explain it. Father-in-law? Finally, a response. Explain it right away. What on earth is going on? Please wait. Calm down a little, please. I will listen to you and explain. Calm down, you say. How can I calm down in a situation like this? Why are you suddenly losing control? What happened? If you don't tell me, I won't understand either. It's my son. Jack has been taken away by the police. It happened this morning. Ah, I see. Judging by your reaction, you must know something, right? Yes. First of all, I was the one who reported him to the police. What did you say? I will explain the situation to you, so could you please listen? Fine. Go ahead and tell me. First of all, I'm truly sorry about your wife's passing. Ah, I see. It was so sudden, and I haven't been able to come to terms with it myself. It feels unreal, you know. I feel the same way. Your wife was always so kind to me. My son Jack was quite upset that you didn't attend the funeral. He was extremely angry about it. I'm truly sorry about that. I did receive the funeral notification from him, but there were misunderstandings and miscommunications. I was unaware of the passing and went on without knowing. I see. Since my wife and you were close, I was a little puzzled by your absence. It's truly regrettable that I couldn't bid her farewell. Please allow me to visit her grave. Of course. Go and pay your respects. It would make my wife happy, too. Thank you very much. Now, going back to the topic. Ah, please, get to the main point. Because I didn't attend the funeral, he has been blaming and accusing me harshly. And then, he asked me to pay him $10,000 as a memorial fee. $10,000? It's an unbelievable amount. I told him that I can't afford it. Well, that's understandable. I've never heard of such a thing, and I don't see any reason to pay either. That's when it turned into an argument, and he started saying he would forcibly collect it. Forcibly? Are you saying he wants to forcefully take money from you? How? I thought the same thing. I didn't take it seriously and thought he was just joking. What has he done? Why is he saying such incoherent things? I don't understand either. And then, the other day, my house was broken into, and three hundred dollars was stolen. What? Are you serious? I couldn't believe it myself, so I asked him, and he readily admitted that he did it. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. I was also shocked and confused, and what's worse, 
He said that since it wasn't enough, he will come and steal again. Doesn't he realize that he's engaging in criminal activities? I also warned him, but he didn't listen. Instead, he even demanded additional compensation. When he took the $300 with him, I asked him about it. I asked, what happened to that money? What did he say? He claimed that he received it from you. He said that you voluntarily gave it to him. What? That's a lie. That money was stolen from my house. It feels like a nightmare. I truly have no words. He confessed that he entered through the window himself. He also mentioned that he would break in again. So I consulted the police. So that's what happened. I just lost my wife. And now my son is involved in something like this. Honestly, I don't know what to do. But I have done terrible things to you. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, father-in-law. He is the one who is at fault. In times like this, how reassuring it would be if my wife were still here. I'm truly sorry that I couldn't attend the funeral due to being manipulated by his lies. I, too, had been taken care of by your wife countless times. I apologize for ending up in this situation. No, you don't have to apologize. Once my son returns, I'll make sure he apologizes sincerely in person. It's not necessary, really. He seems to genuinely despise me. What my son did is a crime. He must reflect on his actions. Also, you don't have to pay the money he demands from you, of course. Thank you very much. If you're willing, please visit my wife's grave. She would be happy if you came. Yes, of course. I will definitely go and pay my respects. Next day... Hey, respond, will you? What are you going to do? It's all your fault. What? So, we can communicate again. What did you say? It's all your fault. What are you talking about? I haven't done anything wrong. It's because you're withholding the money. Because of that, my life is a mess. My fault? It's your own doing. You actually reported it to the police. You better be prepared. Not reporting it would be strange. You're the one who committed the crime. Hmm, <clears throat> but you know what? I've already been released. What did you say? It ended with a questioning and a strict warning. I'm finally free. They treated it as a family matter and handled it lightly, huh? Ha ha, too bad for you. Well, there won't be a next time. If you don't make improvements despite repeated warnings, you'll get caught. No doubt about it. Speaking of which, did you say something to my father? Just when I finally got released from the police and was looking forward to relaxing, as soon as I arrived home, my father was waiting with an upset expression. Oh, so you managed to anger your father-in-law. He can be very scary when he's angry. Huh? Why are you reacting as if it's none of your business? It feels like none of my business because it's about you. You got caught by the police. It's because you reported it to the police. We're not on the same page here. It's your fault for doing something that warrants being reported. As soon as I arrived home, it was endless lecturing and complaints. Oh, really? What did they say to you? It's embarrassing that you ended up like this. I don't remember raising you like this. Mom would be saddened if she saw this. None of that is true, except the facts. After getting lectured by the police, I came home. I even got lectured by Dad. On top of that, the neighbors treat me like a criminal. The police coming to our house must have quickly spread rumors. But it's all the consequences of your own actions. It's just the worst. It's a nightmare. I can't even repay my debts like this. Huh? 
Debt? Wait, you're in debt? Well, not exactly debt. Just borrowed some money. Borrowed money is still considered debt, isn't it? Stop being so naggy. Don't sweat the small stuff. Did you get involved in gambling or something? You didn't have any debts before. It's not exactly gambling. More like a little game. A game? It's become popular among friends, you know? Games like poker, board games, you know. Oh, and also betting on which team will win the next soccer match. You can't be serious. That's right. Just playing isn't fun enough. We play with money at stake. So you're gambling. It's just a little game we play among friends. It's not a big deal. So how much debt did you accumulate? My luck hasn't been great lately, you know. I've been unlucky. That doesn't matter anymore. It's not good. I've been losing. Losing and even lost in a high-stakes game to make a comeback. I'm down about $10,000 overall. $10,000? You mean you have a $10,000 debt? I don't want to believe it, but yeah, that's the situation. I've been trying to cover it up, but the guys I've been playing with are pressuring me to pay up. They're demanding payment soon. This is unbelievable. I never thought you would not only get involved in gambling, but also accumulate such a large debt. That's why I'm counting on getting that $10,000 back from you. So it was $10,000. It's clear that your feelings towards your mother were just a sham. Truly despicable. I thought if I said it was for my mother's sake, I could get my hands on $10,000. You and my mother were closer than me. I don't care about that. I just need the money, no matter what. You're still saying that? Exploiting the overseas culture and the death of a family member? Have some shame. If it weren't for the debt, things wouldn't have turned out like this. If you had debt too, you would understand how I feel. If your late mother found out, she would be saddened. I don't want anything to do with someone like you ever again. Stay out of my life. Wait. But you must feel sad about my mother's death, right? Of course I feel sad. It's obvious that I feel sad. Then it's fine if you help me, thinking it's for my mother's sake. What do you mean by that? Because my mother was a kind person. She would have helped me in one way or another, in my current situation. Really? Maybe so. What does that have to do with me? I want you to help me, taking my mother's place. I thought you would carry on my mother's will. It's true that I loved your mother deeply, but you know I'm not your mother. Can you stop with these convenient thoughts? The feelings I have for your mother and the feelings I have for you are completely separate. It's something you should understand if you think about it rationally. But we have a connection, don't we? I don't have a single cent to give you. Stop using your mother's name for your own desires. It's making me sick. My mother would be saddened by this. Is that okay with you? Yes, she would be saddened by your ugly behavior. Hey! Well then, I'll make one concession. What is it? I'll let the theft incident slide this time. Huh? In return, become a decent human being and make amends to your mother. It will take a lifetime. What? And to your father as well. Your actions have added even more burden to the already difficult situation after your mother's passing. You should apologize properly. It's impossible. It's meaningless. What? 
What's with you? Right now, it's all about money. It's meaningless if it's not about money. You still don't understand anything, do you? You're the one who doesn't get it. Instead of lecturing, just give me the money. What did you say? I'm saying this for your own sake, you know. If it were true, I'd cut off this conversation right away. For my sake? It's none of your business. Just give me the money already, if you're saying it's for my sake. You're beyond help, you idiot. I can offer a special deal right now. I'll waive $10,000. Consider it as payment for the alimony. How about that? It's not a bad offer, right? Shut up. Hey, I'm begging you. The truth is, I don't have a place to live, and I'm in trouble. What? No place to live? Yeah, that's right. I don't understand the meaning of it. It has nothing to do with me, though. Don't say that. We used to have a connection, didn't we? There's no connection anymore. I couldn't afford the rent, so I fell behind on payments. Even so, I managed to ask the landlord for an extension. So you hadn't even paid the rent? It's the worst situation. And then my father came to the house, and we had a big fight, so the neighbors complained. Finally, we received an eviction notice. It's not my fault. You got addicted to gambling and kept losing, but you didn't stop. I admit I was stubborn at times, but I never thought the debt would escalate to this extent. I don't know. You're the one who let the debt spiral out of control. I don't even have the money to stay in a hotel. Looks like the only option is to go to your parents' house. Apologize to your father. It's impossible. My father told me not to come back home. Well, of course he's angry. He must be furious. If that's the case, I want to stay at your place. Let me stay as a temporary guest for a while. Don't be ridiculous. If you keep saying that, I'll file a formal complaint for trespassing. In court. Come on. If you have nowhere to stay, then get arrested and live in prison. You should understand that you're not in a position to ask anyone for help. Hey, listen to me properly. I'll say it again. I won't file a police report against you. In return, never have anything to do with me for the rest of your life. Thereafter, I deleted all of his contact information and set my messaging settings to block him completely. Afterwards, as promised to my father-in-law, I visited my mother-in-law's grave. At the gravesite, I apologized once again for not being able to attend the funeral. And instead of money, I offered a lavish bouquet of flowers, the kind that my mother-in-law loved. I completely cut ties with Jack, so I have no idea what happened to him afterward. My father-in-law also mentioned that he couldn't reach his son, but I have no way of knowing. I heard through rumors that he fled from the hometown to escape his debts. Truly, he is an utterly despicable person. I am living happily to this day. Hey, Alice. How are you? It's sudden, but guess where I am? Hi, Riley. It's been a while. Where? Mm, your home? No! Are you at the cafe then? No, I'm not! Come on! Somewhere more amazing! Hmm... I don't know. Really? Alright, I'll tell you the answer then. Now, I'm in Paris, France! The city everyone dreams of. Huh? I envy you. Why? Are you traveling? What brings you to Paris? Yeah, 
I'm here on my trip. This has always been my dream destination. I always wanted to visit Paris once in my life. It's awesome after all. LOL. Everything here is beautiful and the food is really delicious. Just like people call it city of flowers, the flowers are beautiful too. Like it is welcoming me. Riley, you sound so happy. I feel your excitement. Who's with you? I don't think you would go there alone. No way! I'm not alone! Who do you think is with me? Guess who? It's someone you know. Hmm? I have no idea. Who are you with? But you can just try to guess, right? Try guessing some names randomly. You might get it right. Hmm. Your family? No! You guessed it wrong! Okay. How about a co worker? Nope. It's not a co worker. Then your boyfriend, right? Bingo! You're smart as always. Hey! Are you bragging about your new boyfriend? Don't say you're on a honeymoon. Unfortunately? We are not married yet, so he's just my boyfriend. I see. But if you say yet, that means you have plans to get married eventually. You desire too much. The type of guys you want are such a rare kind. Cherish him. What? Are you gonna scold me just because I look happy? No. Just a tip from a married woman. You sound pompous. Don't look down on me just because you got married before me. I will be fine without your advice, Alice. I didn't mean it. I just, I just want you to be happy. By the way, where in Paris are you now? I'm sightseeing near the Eiffel Tower today. That sounds great. Show me your picture. Okay, lol. We are just having lunch. It's delicious French cuisine. Wait a second. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Here you go. A fancy lunch at the restaurant by the fountain. The view is really beautiful too. See? It looks wonderful, right? Hmm? What's this? What's going on? What's wrong, Alice? Isn't this a nice photo? LOL. Riley, is this guy with you in the picture? Adam, aren't you with your boyfriend? Wow! How do you know him? You figured it out, Alice. LOL. You guessed right. LMAO. Yes, he's my boyfriend now. LOL. Don't be silly. What are you gonna do? You know Adam is my husband, right? A Paris trip with my husband? I can't believe it. I just remembered. Adam told me that he was gonna travel with his college friends. So he was talking about you. So he lied to me to travel with you. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, Riley, why is Adam there? Couldn't it be someone else? Please explain the details. What are you so angry about? It's only natural for me to choose Adam, isn't it? Huh? Of course I'm angry. Adam is my husband. What do you mean it's only natural to choose Adam? What do you mean? Because I guess you know about it. He's the next CEO, you know? He's tall and I like his face. He graduated from a famous college and is smart. I'm the one who deserves him, you see? But why are you his wife? Well, 
I wanted him more because of that fact, LMAO. I had been attracted to him even before your marriage, but you know, don't you want a guy more when he is someone else's? So I decided to take him. See? It's only natural, right? Are you joking? Taking someone else's husband is the worst thing you can do. Do you even know what you're doing? Say anything you want about it, lol. I'll listen to you today because I'm now so happy that I don't even care about Alice nagging anymore, lol. I see you as a friend. I feel stupid to even think we were friends. What are you saying? I still see you as a friend, LMAO. I see you as a cupid of love who gave me Adam, LOL. After all, if it weren't for you, I would never even met Adam. I want to thank you again, Alice. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, do you want money now? Huh? What do you mean? Why are you suddenly talking about money? I'll give you money so you can get a divorce from him. Get a divorce from Adam. I want you to make Adam free. Then Adam will be even happier than he is now. What are you saying? Are you really sane? Do you understand what you're doing? Stop being so giddy already. Don't be so mad. You receive the money, then I can marry Adam. It's a win-win, no, a win-win-win situation, including Adam. So I think it's a great idea. See? Don't you agree? Okay then. There's no way I can accept that. I know this kind of talk will get us nowhere. I'll talk with him. Oh my. I think it's pointless to talk to Adam. Good luck, lol. I'm waiting for good news, lol. Five minutes later. Riley, I couldn't call Adam. What's happening? Did you say something to Adam? <sighs> Of course you can't, lol. I told him to think only about me during the trip. If he receives a call from you, he won't be able to enjoy the trip, right? So, he promised me not to respond to your call. Adam doesn't want to be disturbed during our date. I see. But I'm not happy yet. I want to talk directly with Adam. Please, Riley, tell him to respond to my call. He's next to you, right? Of course he's next to me. But, nope. We've promised to fully enjoy the trip for two weeks. We plan to walk around the beautiful streets of Paris and eat lots of delicious food. You can expect that you won't be able to call us for the next week. Today, I texted you just out of kindness as a friend. LOL. At least you should be grateful for it. LOL. How dare you say such a thing? Don't be silly. So Adam knows the fact that you told me about him. It doesn't matter. It's none of your business. Riley, did you reveal that fact just on impulse? Without asking Adam about it. What are you talking about? That's not true. As I told you, it was just out of my kindness. LOL. Really? Does Adam know it as well? Hiding something from him is what he hates the most. Once he knows about the secret later, he'll try to break up even with you. It can't be. Um, Adam wouldn't dump me over something like that. <laughs> Seems I was right. 
Adam doesn't know about it. You're just acting on your own. Th that's not true. The, the battery of my phone is dying, so I'll turn it off. Please don't contact me or Adam for the next week. Bye. One hour later. It's been a while, Alice. This is Luna. I have something to ask you about my sister, Riley. Can I talk to you now? Luna, it's been a while. I'm fine. What's wrong? Well, Riley keeps ignoring me. I want to talk with her, but I've always got a voicemail when I call her, and she's not replying to my text messages. Can you tell me if you know anything about her? Alice, you're friends with Riley, right? I see. So she hasn't even contacted her own sister. About Riley? I can guess why you can't talk to her now. Huh? What do you mean? Do you know something, Alice? Does that mean you can't contact Riley either? Did she start ignoring you too about a week ago? Y yes How do you know about it? Did something happen to my sister? <sighs> As I thought, this will be a bit harsh of a story for you, but... Are you ready? Well... Yes. I don't mean to shock you, but... She texted me just earlier today. Huh? She told me that she is in Paris now. With... My husband. Riley said... It's a trip with her boyfriend. Huh? With your husband? Doesn't that mean he's cheating on you? I can't believe it. He is. She sent me a photo of her with my husband in front of the fountain in Paris. She took her time to tell me about it. Just before you texted me. They looked very happy. Oh my... That's terrible. So, perhaps she turned her phone off to ignore any inconvenient messages. I know it doesn't sound true, but it is. Alice, I'm really sorry for you. As her younger sister, let me apologize. Huh? Luna? Do you believe me? Riley is your sister. Yes, I'm sure that Riley is the one who lured him. I don't know how to apologize. I'm sorry as her little sister. You don't need to feel sorry about it. It's all Riley's fault. I'm just glad you believe my story. Of course I do. Because this is the second time for her to have affairs. Huh? What? What are you saying? You mean, something like this has happened before? Yes. Actually, the reason she broke up with her ex was also her affair with another man. I didn't know about that. But, what should I do? I have something to tell Riley, but I really need to contact her, especially today. What is it? It seems serious. If you don't mind, I'll listen to you. Well, my mom's got seriously ill since last night. The doctor said it's possible that she could pass away anytime. I was thinking my sister should see mother at least once before she passes away. I was going to tell her about it, but... But how could she go on a trip with her lover at a time like this? I see. Actually... This is not the first time for me to get into trouble due to her. I've been dealing with her since I was a child, so I'm used to it by now. Uh-huh. Well, indeed I know Riley's always been such a woman. It sounds like it's been tough for you too. Yes. When I was in elementary school, when she broke her friend's bike, I want to apologize to her friend instead of her. She took away my favorite things and once she kissed my new boyfriend before I did. 
I just can't believe she's my sister sometimes. Really? That's terrible. Yeah. I thought I broke up with him, but Riley brought him as her fiancé a week later. My parents and I were shocked, but Riley didn't seem to feel guilty at all, though. It must have been tough. I've put up with her behavior as her sister, and I can't believe that she flirted with your husband. I can't forgive her. I can no longer stand her. I'll, I'll cut ties with her, so do whatever you like with her. Please feel free to take revenge on her, Alice. Luna, I can relate to your pain. Thanks. I am ready, thanks to you. I'll punish her along with Adam. I need to make her realize how serious her actions are. That's the spirit. I'll help you as much as possible. So please count on me. Thanks. See you. You can call me anytime. Yeah, thank you very much. I will call you again. Last day of the trip. Look, Alice, this is a meal at the hotel. Doesn't it look delicious? Do you think you can make things like this for Adam? Of course not, LMAO. I'll show you the view from the hotel. Have you ever been to such a luxurious hotel with Adam? How wonderful, isn't it? We are moving to another hotel tomorrow, but... I want to stay here longer. I'm happy every day. Hey, are you listening? Come on, don't ignore me. Are you ignoring me? You have a lot of nerve. What? Are you angry? Are you ignoring me because you're angry? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't ignoring you on purpose. I just didn't have the time to check my message for a bit. I've been to a funeral. A funeral? Oh, I'm sorry for you. Did someone die? LMAO, someone I know? LOL? Are you joking? It's your mom. She's been seriously ill, but... I feel really sorry for her. Huh? What are you saying? Wait. Missed call, missed call, missed call, missed call. Hey! Answer the phone! Please. I'm now at a funeral. So wait a while. I'm now seeing your mom off. So please be quiet. <laughs> Don't be silly. Is this a prank or something? It's nasty even as a joke. Hey, are you listening to me? Alice! Missed call, missed call, missed call, missed call, missed call. Answer it already! Do you think you have the right to do this? Explain it to me. Come on! One hour later. Hey, Alice? Please, just reply to me, please. Alice! What? Can't you wait a little bit? I'm busy now as I told you. Hey, do you remember my sister? Her name is Luna. Of course. She and I were in the same school club. Oh, I remember it now. I, I can't get hold of her. She always responds to me quickly. But not this time. I also called her many times. I wonder if anything happened to her? Of course she won't. You still think this is a joke, don't you? Why? So you know something. I've been telling you. Your mother passed away. Your mother is also Luna's mother. Since you're wandering around like this, Luna's the host at the funeral. So she doesn't have time to answer it. Use your brain. No. I can't believe it. My mother passing away? Wasn't that your joke? Because you're not happy with my relationship with Adam. You're doing this on purpose, right? Please say so. Hey, isn't that so? 
It's all BS. I can't joke about something like that. You turned off your phone after texting me, right? Her condition changed suddenly that evening, while you were having a fling in Paris. You're lying! How did you know it? Are you enjoying this kind of shit? Stop it already! If you keep joking like that, I'll get mad! You still can't believe it, can you? I heard it from Luna. Because she couldn't get hold of you, she asked me if I knew anything about you. Luna contacted me and she told me that her mom had gotten seriously ill. Luna tried to contact you so hard. You should have received lots of missed calls and messages from her a few days ago. But you had your phone turned off. If you think that's a lie, ask Luna. The funeral is finished now. I'll do so even without being told. Five minutes later. Luna. Hey, Luna. Please reply to me. Why are you ignoring me? Hey, reply to me. Riley. What's wrong? Seems like you finally turned on your phone. I thought you'd never text me. It's too late to contact me now. You know what? Alice has made up our mom's death. Can't you believe she would make such a joke, right? She sucks, doesn't she? What are you saying? It's real. Alice wasn't joking. Our mom really passed away. I'm at the crematory right now. <gasps> it can't be true. Can't you stop it, Luna? Why would I tell you a lie? Do you think there are any daughters that tell a lie about their own mother? Maybe there are, but I would never do such a thing. Unfortunately, it's true. If you don't mind, can I send you a picture of the crematory? Will you believe me then? Wait. Stop it. Hey, isn't it a lie? Were you told by Alice to do this? Did she pay you money? Hey, say it's a lie. That's enough. Mom is really... Hey, stop this now. I really wish it was a joke. Do you want to bully me this much? Even at a time like this. Please, just stop. S sorry. I didn't mean to mess around with you. I just couldn't believe it. But it seems true. Mom really passed away. It is a real fact. I tried to contact you when mom collapsed, but it wasn't you who didn't answer because you had turned off your phone. Well, where and what were you doing? Y yeah <laughs> I'm sorry. So, what about the inheritance then? She's supposed to leave quite a lot of money as an entrepreneur. Did she say something about it? Anyway, I'll be back home after returning from the trip, so let's talk about how to divide the money then. So don't decide anything without asking me, right? I'm coming back in a week. Talking about inheritance now. You're so good at quick changing as always. I'm speechless. You have such a good personality, Riley. You don't even feel sad when mom passed away. And you're still going to continue your trip after you found out about this. You don't have to say it like that. This is what an older sister does. We have to talk about the money until we agree, since you're not as smart as me. I'm worried that you'll get fooled by some strange guys. No problem if you leave it all to me. Stop this bullshit. Don't be selfish. Huh? Luna? Riley, you don't need to come back to her parents' home. I won't let you return home. She left no money for you. Huh? How can you say something so selfish? Are you finally out of your mind? I'm her daughter. How did she leave no money for her precious first daughter? No. Her last will clearly says that she didn't want to leave any money for you. Too bad, Riley. So don't come back anymore. I don't want to see you anymore. I never thought you could be such a terrible sister. Stop it already! 
How dare a younger sister say such a cocky thing? You can't make a decision about inheritance by yourself. Yeah, it's not my decision to make. But her mother left a will. Her last will also says that Luna is her only daughter and she'd leave nothing for Riley. That's all. So Riley, she left nothing for you. This is what mom decided. It can't be true, because she loved me since I was little. She'd bought me anything I wanted, and she'd always been on my side. Yeah, maybe she did love you when you were little. Y yeah, that's right, but why? Why did she say that she left nothing for me? She would never say such a thing. You must have told her something about a will, right? That must be it. You've always wanted my things because you're not as good as me since you were little. You remember, right? You used to look at my fashionable dress from afar, didn't you? That has bothered me a lot. So, this is revenge, isn't it? I really can't believe you. Revenge? For what? I have never wanted anything that belongs to you. You've always wanted my things, haven't you? By the way... You took my boyfriend away from me once. Um, that's... Mom knew that. You've always targeted guys with a wife or a girlfriend. And after sleeping with my boyfriend to bring him as a fiancé, you got tired of him and you abandoned him. Did you think mom hadn't noticed? What's more, you didn't take care of our mom when she got ill. You are playing around when you were back home and saw her you only talked to her about her money she was tired of your behavior you only think of her as a source of money she often told me that she couldn't see you as a daughter anymore think about your actions until now does anything come to mind it can't be i can't believe mom thought that about me she wanted to give me all her money after her death and apologize for all the troubles he caused, and would leave no money for Riley. I know that she decided to do so. So, have you known anything about this? And yet, you stayed quiet. Why did you tell her that she was wrong? Or better yet, why didn't you contact me right away? Are you really my sister? Oh, I see. You wanted a piece of that inheritance too, didn't you? You stayed quiet because you thought you could get it all for yourself, didn't you? Don't be so selfish. Do you think I had no grudge against you? When I heard it from my mom, I agreed with her. I said that if she gave her money to you, you would use and waste all the money soon. Mom was laughing when she heard that too. Luna! You bitch! Who do you think you're talking to now? Oh... By the way, she also said she didn't want you to come to her funeral. But I thought it's too miserable and tried to call you. But you didn't answer your phone. Besides, I asked Alice if she knew anything about you, only to find out you're traveling with her husband. I was really disappointed. You are the worst jerk, Riley. L Luna, don't get so mad. You respect me, don't you? You love me, right? Hey, don't you? You are my sister, right? Aren't you? <clears throat> Th then let me explain. I'm not wrong. Stop it. I won't listen to you anymore. How could I respect you? You've always blamed others like this and casually put the blame on me. I don't want to listen to excuses from such a jerk. I'm so sick of being manipulated by you, big sister. Una... Please, I'm not to blame for it. Hey, Luna! Immediately following. Seems like you finished talking with Luna. Luna sounded so proud. What did you talk to her about, Riley? Did you talk things out? None of your business. Just leave me alone. Okay. Well, I'm fine with it. By the way... I'll tell you this clearly as well. What? Is there still something else? 
I decided to get a divorce from Adam, as you wanted. Oh, really? So? Yet, I'll tell you one thing. That you apparently misunderstood. Huh? Misunderstood? What are you talking about? Now, there's nothing standing between Adam and me. It's been a tough ride, but I can finally be happy. We'll live a graceful life together. Huh. You don't know anything, do you? Adam is not as rich as you think. I wonder where did you get it from? Huh? <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Adam is the next president, so he's definitely going to be a celebrity. <sighs> Are you jealous because I took Adam from you? You're so ugly, LMAO. Even if you do so, he'll never choose you, lol. Since he's chosen me, Adam told me I'm the number one on this trip to Paris. He no longer loves you, right? Lol. And you hate it. You should know it yourself since you've always hid behind me and you can't do anything. As a friend, I'm trying to let your husband be happy, so you can appreciate me, LMAO. I know, you don't want to believe it, but please calm down for a moment. Haven't you heard anything from Adam about his company? His company? I've heard nothing. What is it? Ah, got it. As I suspected, you haven't been told anything. Actually, the company he's gonna take over is now at great risk. They have been trying out a new business venture since last year, but it failed in a business and is heavily in debt. It's probably in the billions. Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Come on, stop joking around. Now it's trying to be rebuilt, but many employees have been laid off. So now the remaining members are doing their jobs, but Adam told me himself it won't last long. Now it's still staying afloat, but he said he's not sure how many months it could go on. He often complains about that. It seems like he's been really worried about it. That's a lie. You don't have to believe me, but I've still tried to support him and his company by getting qualifications that would be helpful, but it seems like it was all for nothing. But I can no longer be with a cheater. I'm legit fed up with him. Whether you go on a trip with Adam or get married, I don't care anymore. Do whatever you want. Y you're lying. Tell me it's a lie. Oh, I wish it were a lie. Why don't you ask him about it? He's probably around here somewhere, right? I'm sure that he'll tell you the truth with hesitant eyes, because he hates hiding something. No way! Well, more importantly, Adam is to blame for his adultery. And of course you, Riley. Both of you deserve punishments. I'm never gonna forgive you, so... Prepare yourself. Prepare for what? You said do what I want. What? Didn't you say this yourself? Compensation. I don't mind if you do what you want, but I want you to pay for your actions. I will demand alimony from both of you for this affair. Okay. My husband will pay it for me, so I'm fine, LMAO. My husband won't notice my infidelity anyway, lol. Are you? But when I told your husband about your trip with Adam, he said that he'd get a divorce from you. You may think he didn't notice your actions up until now, but your husband seems to have had a vague suspicion. Huh? Wait, what did you tell him without asking me? I can't believe you'd tell my husband! What are you talking about now? I also showed him the pictures and messages you sent me. 
So, he believed it immediately. He seems to have made up his mind after what happened this time. He told me that he was fed up with being messed up by your selfishness and putting up with it. So, he'd break up with you to feel relieved. He also said that he'll demand compensation from you and Adam to start up a business abroad as a fresh start. He sounded so excited, lol. No, no way! That timid guy can't strike back at me. He probably just said it because he was forced by you. Nothing's happened yet, so if I call him now, I can still make it in time. Timid? Is he? He was calling a lawyer in front of me, so I thought he acts quickly. L lawyer Are you serious? What should I do? You rip what you saw. Think for yourself. Oh, yes! Then Luna, she'll do something for me because she'll get my mom's money. I'm sure she'll use it for me. But, but we're family. Families help each other in times of need. Oh, will she? Really? Is it really such a simple problem? W why not? Why are you being so mean all the time? Luna is my dear little sister. She will help me, I'm sure of it. Because she's now asking a junk dealer to dispose of everything you have. When things settle down, she'll apparently sell your mom's house and move somewhere. She just told me not to tell you her address. Perhaps she's never going to contact you anymore. You've done terrible things to Luna, haven't you? You're lying. Why? Why doesn't anybody stand up for me? I just wanted to be loved by everyone. Why does everyone bully me? Alice, are you my friend? My closest friend, right? So please, forgive me and stop demanding money from me. Please. Of course not. Why do you think you'll be forgiven? Alice, why? Aren't we friends? Did you say I'm your friend? You took my husband away from me. How dare you say such a thing? Friends don't usually steal each other's husbands like you did. You boasted so much about your affair trip at first. You brought this on yourself. I'll make sure to thoroughly deal with you this time. Get ready, Riley. Alice, please forgive me, Alice! From now on, contact me through my lawyers. Don't contact me personally again. Well then, enjoy your happy life with Adam. Hey, wait a minute, Alice, Alice! Thereafter. After that, Adam returned home with a completely innocent face. Reading the conversation between me and Riley, he immediately gave up and kneeled down on the floor. I have, however, no feelings for Adam anymore, so I asked for a divorce, and Adam accepted it hesitantly. Well, he had to admit with that much evidence. Adam had to pay a heap of money to me and Riley's ex-husband. After a little while, he became a CEO but his reputation as a cheater affected his company and its businesses went further downhill until it went bankrupt. Riley lost all her friends as I and her ex-husband demanded money from her. Since Adam refused to pay on behalf of Riley, she got a divorce from him to end their relationship in less than a month. Now, both of them are working so hard to cover their compensations. Meanwhile, I've got closer to Luna thanks to this incident. And now, we have lunch together at least twice a week. And I'm planning a trip with her sometime soon.